Fanboy Crossing presents the Word of the Nerd podcast, an interesting conversation about interesting topics with interesting people, with your host, Simon Haynes. Greetings and salutations, this is the Word of the Nerd podcast. I'm your nerd, Simon Haynes, and with me today is my my good friend, Evan Hall, and probably the biggest Whovian I know, oh no, second biggest, I would say. Sven is probably the biggest one, but uh, it's not his podcast. We're here to talk about. Oh god, I don't even want to say it to a certain degree. Um, oh, that Doctor Who finale. Oh dear. I don't know about you, but oh, I I couldn't stand it. I I was I haven't screamed and shouted at. I haven't shouted at a TV show or a movie since um, pretty much Bayformers. I haven't even sat down and watched the whole thing. That's how offended I am by Bayformers, man. You couldn't. Oh God! Um, I think I uh, I stopped the movie three times when I watched Bayformers and shouted, "For fuck's sake, stop with the goddamn cliches!" I think it's just, it, yeah, I just can't deal with it. Yeah. I, I to, you, he, here's my biggest problem with it. Go go and watch. All you want to really see if you watch a film like Transformers is watching a big ass robot mm-hmm. beating up another big ass robot. Yeah, something you're short of. However, they decided to put in this whole human interest thing. I don't care about humans. <laughs> and I think, if anything, if you take uh, a lot of modern uh, movie goes and things, they have enough maturity, mm. and even especially kids, have enough things to say, hey, well, we don't really need to need, care about human beings and whatever else. You could have simply done a focus on the robots, which is all it really needed to be. We, you don't need this human interest stuff. We really did not need Optimus Prime to skulk around a house being quiet and saying, oops, my bad. Yeah, well, you can take it back a step from that. Let's let's discuss Bumblebee. Oh no, okay. Let's 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 table that for another discussion because we're gonna we're gonna start having an hour on how horrible Bayformers is, and I want to talk about how horrible. Yeah, I actually forgot the name of the bloody last episode because I'm thinking. I remember, Death in Heaven. Sorry. Oh, what one are we discussing? In Doctor Who, because you had Death in Heaven. Death in Heaven. Oh god, you had Hard Water, and that was hardly a. Special. No, I, I was able to get past the point because it's it's a bit like. Um, you've just got to go along and what I've, what I've decided with Doctor Who is, is, is you can't sit down and think about it too much I know that sounds really stupid mm. but you've just got to go in and enjoy the ride I think it's a really <laughs> advantage by having the kids with me because I watch them and I watch it as the kids go I'd like to point out that I have a nine year old and a two year old <laughs> two of them are fanatical Doctor Who fans especially probably the daughter who's the two year old um, so much so she can actually pick out the 12th Doctor from all the other Doctors and refer to it as, as my Doctor ah you never forget your first Doctor no but then it's probably our fault because she's had multiple TARDISes <laughs> <laughs> now for me for me the whole one of the biggest problems I have with the entire episode is that so my friend uh, Brian pointed this out to me on paper all the elements of that episode should have been brilliant um, a few I won't go into but uh, yeah, the whole idea of you know, the Cyberman, you know, coming to Earth, you know, the idea of using the, the Cyberman to bring back the dead to essentially create an army. There's the h- idea of Clara becoming, you know, being hinted as this kind of, ultimately maybe the enemy of the Doctor. All the stuff really does say, say very good stuff. But the episode just fell flat. It, I think it was just, the first part I thought was just so heavily padded. Okay, this is going to be a huge spoiler episode, so if you haven't watched it, um, well, you probably haven't watched it anyway, because let's say it's what, two weeks ago now, and the hardcore Hoovians would have watched it, it's been on TV. But for me, like, for example, that first, the cliffhanger of the episode, the hardware episode, nothing seemed to have happened. It was just that thing of like, oh, all of a sudden, it's the Cyberman, which is actually the the surprise that I got spoiled by the previous episode's uh, trailer, which happened not at the end of the credits like usual, but right after the episode while you're still watching. And so all of a sudden, you finish the episode and Simon show up and you're like, well, that kind of gave away the surprise. Uh, are we discussing the Forest of the Night ending? Yeah. Oh, yeah but do, do, so do you know what the kicker is about that? Yeah. Go and watch that Forest of the Night and watch what the trailer is. It's all the trailer for episode so two. So two! Yes! It's, the epi- it's, it's all the stuff for the second part and none of the so all the setup is just like you know what's coming and so all that setup is kind of ruined and it was just so boring you know what I don't mind it um, it's a really good example can be given in uh, the King's Demons and it's the Doctor and he's having discussion with Tegan 
and Tegan, when they land there and they work out everything that's going on and they're about to get involved in the situation, she swings around and she goes, why do you get yourself involved? You already know how it's going to end and all that sort of stuff. He goes, yeah, but you want to see how it gets to that yeah. point. And it's the same thing. I'm fine with the Cybermen turning up. I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine with how it was all the end. It, part of the enjoyment is how you get there. It's a bit like the old joke being. Hmm. Half the fun is getting there. Of course, the other half is getting back, but that's not the point. <laughs> but it's still, as long as you've got that enjoyment to keep you going, you don't mind where it ends I up. I wasn't enjoying myself. That was the biggest that's, problem. Yep, really I was there going, yeah. This is probably the most disappointing uh, finale of the new series. So, yes. Right up all the way to Eccleston. This yeah. one, it just was so underwhelming. Yeah. It was. But let's even come back and let's look at the season as a whole. Hmm. And oh. there hasn't been that moment in every episode. No. Um, let's take for example um, you look at the first one Deep Breath I know we're getting off from, from Death in Heaven but I, I think this is, this is a point you go every time that a new Doctor is introduced there is that moment hmm. the moment where they step up and they take control and from that moment on it's just boom yeah and that, the Doctor in this probably this season he's the most oh, I'm just going to step back and let everyone else take care of it Doctor it's the idea is that they're trying to establish is the got Doctor a good guy or a bad guy, which I can kind of get, but couldn't that come out through his actions, not just him just stepping back and going, I'm not sure if I'm a good guy or a bad guy. I'll let everyone else deal with it. The example, the Moon episode, that was, I, I like that one because it was the whole idea is that the Doctor turns around and says to Clara, I can't do this. I know how this ends. I can't interfere with this. The decision has to be yours. That was actually a really good way mm-hmm. of doing it. I thought that was mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. And... I thought, you know, how they... it was If they had done that as the departure of Clara, it would have been uber strong. You know, just this fact of the... the, the and that's the thing. They teased this whole thing with um, with Danny Pink Dan, going, oh, the Doctor's going to make you do something you don't want to, and then you'll come straight to me. And the next episode, the Doctor makes her do something she doesn't want, and she... And it's like, oh, well, way to, way to kind of, you know... Stop that suspense. And then the, the very next episode, all of a sudden they're happy and smiling and on a bloody train. The complete rip off of bloody Starship Titanic. But we'll go into that. Going back to the Doctor's, I won't say ineptitude because that's just wrong. It's just more the fact that he just does nothing. And then, yeah, you've got the, the planets. The, then you got the planet. you got the trees, you know, springing up all over the planet um, episode. Again, he does nothing. And it's like, you go, this is the Doctor. This, you know, he should be. He should be doing something. Even you know, okay, he's investigating, but then he just it's like that thing where he's like, Oh, I'm investigating, 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 whoop, oh, I better step back and do nothing. But my favourite episode this entire season has been um oh god, I, god my memory's getting really bad for these episodes. The one with all the two D um Flatline. Flatline. That was brilliant, because again, maybe yeah, the doctor's probably doing nothing. But the idea is that he's trapped. And hey, I, I liked it for no other reason, it justified my tireless money box. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, people who've got one of them just went, ah, I've got a, I've got a screen accurate prop now. But um, it was good because it was not the Doctor doing nothing. It was Clara basically taking over the Doctor as well. You know, they, the, the roles were kind of reversed. The Doctor was trapped. He was still helping out, but it was that thing where it wasn't about doing nothing. It was just that fact of, you know, Clara had to step up and she had to do her thing to ultimately free the Doctor to allow him to do his thing. The reason, the other reason that episode worked really well is there's that banter, the yeah. back and forth banter, which I personally, my favourite one, the, the one of all the families, Robert's of Sherwood, and it's again, there's that banter between the two of them, you've got them bouncing off each I just, other. Uh, I liked Robot's of Sher- Robot of Sherwood, um, I thought the plot, I thought the plot was ultimately a bit, a uh, bit crap again, yeah, it's that thing where it's like, oh, okay, you know, we're playing on the whole robot thing, oh, is he, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he, oh, I did like the whole idea where it's like, Robin Hood was a real character that's been forgotten and kind of reinvented. I liked all that type of stuff. But then there's the glorious plot hole where it's like, okay, they're getting all the gold to fix the ship, which is fair enough. But they're smelting all the gold to make the circuitry because it's supposed to be the circuitry which is damaged, which they need to replace, which again makes a lot of sense. Um, all circuit bowls are, you know, gold, silicon, all that stuff. fires of Pompeii. Yeah, it, it, makes, it does make a lot of sense. Except to the point when they shoot the golden arrow into the engine and it just absorbs the gold to make it... You know, if they could do that, why didn't they just absorb the damn gold to begin with? I, I want to take you back to one before that. Go and watch the season. Go and watch it again. And when they first introduced the Sheriff of, of Nottingham, yeah. is it just me or is he wearing a gold necklace? I can't remember. I really... 
Go and check. It pro- I don't know if it's me or not, but I would swear you're bla- it <laughs> black and blue is. that he's wearing a gold necklace, and I'm just like, dude, you're gonna have to fit in your own purpose there, really. Yeah, you need every bit of. It, the idea is very sound. Mm. It's just that thing where you're just going, to, you know, but hey, but the, if they could just absorb gold, they're like, you know, like the anti uh, Cyberman. I, <laughs> I, I like it because. To me, it's it's just a fun episode, and it's got so many in jokes, and it is yeah. it's a third Doctor episode, and yeah, we're watching they've got, it. They got the um, Patrick Troughton uh, joke in there as well, don't they? Multiple Patrick. Yeah. Which one are we discussing, mate? Oh, God, I can't remember. Cause okay, when he's down in the forest and going through and scanning them all, yeah, the miniscope, which is a reference to, and I'm going to kick myself for not remembering, Carnival, mm-hmm. uh, Carnival of Monsters. Uh, you get the. Uh, where he basically does the chop to the guy's arm. That's no, you had the very blatant because you had the photo of Patrick Graham dressed up as Robin Hood in the archives as well. I actually thought that, yeah, 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 yes. I saw that one. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Um, but uh, the John Pertwee with the with a chop. It, mm. it's, to me, it's a third Doctor One, and so much so that I decided to sit down uh, with the kids and we watched the Time Warrior again, which mm. is set basically during the same period. And it does. I just love it. And we we realised is that it can slot in wherever. Mm. It's not a definitive episode. Mm. It needs to be somewhere. Ironic thing, though, it is the third episode of that season, and it focuses on basically the third Doctor, which mm. I just thought was something funny. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing I loved about that episode is that I hated the top button being on the Doctor. It just looked really stupid. Do you know what it looks like? You know, um, when you see someone who's got the... the they're trying to put their hands in their pockets while the jacket's half open, mm. and it looks like, you know, they're trying to, like, essentially bulge out their... Well, let's, say, let's just say their cock. Yeah, they're just basically bulging out their cr- their crotch, and it's, it's like such. I a, do that. Yeah, of course, and that's where I get it from. Um, <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> you and the booty jacket, <laughs> kitty. Uh, but no, it's about to. Yeah, and hey, it just, hey, hey, it worked, right? Nah, nah. I'm, I'm talking about like you know like people like yeah, no, I know what a suit this. jacket, and, so yeah, the, yeah. Like, and it just looks so naff to me. And I thought that just looks yeah, so naff. Why, if you're trying to push open your jacket, do you have your yeah. Jacket button. That, and ever since then, I'm not sure if it's like the gag is that he never replaced the button or mm. that. Whenever he, ever since then, his jacket's just always been open ever since. Well, and I, I think never that, noticed that one. Yes. Because really um, all the promotional footage, you know, it's always been with the, the top button. But ever since then. And what I loved about the episode next to it afterwards, he wears that, he starts wearing that shirt later on, but he wears that shirt which is like a black, like almost like a thin black jumper with so many holes through it, which gives like looks like stars is wearing a white shirt underneath yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I love that so much because it gives that whole idea that the Doctor's okay. kind of like an inter- intergalactic hobo. Go, go to admit, I only watched that episode once. That listen, that was a t- yeah. None. Of, <laughs> yeah. None of this, this is the bit that gets me is that I've been going through and looking at the the figures for, yeah. for how well they've been doing, and they reckon that listen is this amazing episode. It isn't to me, no. and it isn't to my to no. my family. And do you know what it is? It's do you, do you know who, who pointed out to me the reason it doesn't work? My nine-year-old son, Josh, saying, Go on. there's no problem. No, that's it. And that's what it is. There's no problem. Every other episode has a problem. This doesn't have a problem. What's your problem? Yeah, do you know, do you know my biggest issue? That it feels so much like Stephen Moffat um, fan fiction. You know, it's about to... We've got... Okay, um, let's, just, let's just be blunt. Clara is a freaky Mary Sue. Let's just... Let's just be... Outright blunt with it. There's got this character that was created by Moffat. Oh, yes, oh, yes, created all these other ones, but I won't go into that. Um, but let's face it, you know, she becomes the quite literal center of the Doctor's universe, you know, literally jumping into the times. times. So she becomes God Mode suit at one point. She's almost, all, you know, she, she, everyone adores her. No one actually hates her and all this other stuff. And it just, it's so Mary Sue ish. It's just, it's like, oh my Is God. It- and then for her to go back in time, you know, breaking the time barrier, being able to break the time barrier, doing all that, to meet up with a young doctor before he's the doctor, and and imply, oh my god, I, I, it was at that point where essentially that episode was written off for me. It's like, oh my god, we've barely even talked about the last no. finale one. We talked about this god no, no, awful I'll, season. I'll, I'll come back and I'll say <laughs> you were written off on me before that. I think it was the scene in the bed that all of us. We're sitting there and just going, yeah. It was a good mm. idea, but it was just that thing where you're just going, I like the idea of the psychological idea of it, but it just went nowhere. It was always this fact of like, it's all in your head. And it's like, then, then where's the monster? The old, but the whole thing of them in that bed with the kid, that was like the best part of the episode. And then just went downhill. Yeah. Because they never then discuss whether it was or it wasn't, or if something ran off. They never deal with it. It's like, oh, well, we've fixed up your problem in your bed. We're going to see you. 
you almost want to see like the uh, the in the real life CCTV footage of like you know in the corridor like it's like not even like a camera and it's just these three people, you know, refusing <laughs> to turn around but nothing there, you know, it, it, uh, it, it just makes you it just makes you wonder what the hell they were thinking. Uh, but I think that's the almost the pattern of this entire series. I love. I must be. I I see where they're going. It's just that thing. I'm just not sure how that they know how to get there. And I like this new doctor. I oh, like that he's. A, I like that um, Capaldi is you know bringing back an old older grumpier doctor. You got you got this kind of those bits of the first doctor in there. Mm. You got a bit of um, the second doctor in there. You got a bit of the clown in there. You got. It, it really does feel like we've almost as fresh of fresh air, even though it's technically mm. old stale air. If you're going back that far, but after. Yeah, so many charismatic doctors, so many young doctors. To go to a bit of an old grumpier doctor was brilliant. My fa- my favorite part in oh God, again, can't remember the episodes because these this season really has not done an impact. I've not watched a single episode twice this entire year. That's how bad it's been for me. I was like, oh, I've watched it. That's enough. But the one where they're actually in the school, the doctor's the, the caretaker, and what the, I love that moment where the doctor thinks that Clara. <laughs> As going off with the guy yeah, who looks, looks like, like the 11th Doctor. Who looks like the 11th Doctor. It was such a good play. And, of course, we were like, you know, oh, yeah. And I, the whole thing with him calling the um, the soldier the PE teacher, I, I liked all that type of stuff. But, again, the, the episode wasn't really memorable enough. And it's that thing where they're playing with time and it just never makes too much sense. Mm. Uh, and, of course, we've got to have Danny Pink save the day because Danny Pink apparently is the other Mary Sue of this entire season. I'm still trying to figure out what he was doing when he flipped over. Yes, what the hell? Okay, I'm not denying it was a cool flip. Yeah, but, but I really just, it's like, hey, instead of going, look over here and running off to the side, yeah. I'm run towards you, I'll flip over you, and I'll make you follow me in front of everyone else. Yeah, it, it was not really that well thought out. <laughs> I keep, here's the funny thing, is I keep hearing the, the same things like, Oh, apparently they've had budget cuts to Doctor Who. They've had budget cuts to the the story. Yeah, the stories aren't as good. It's like, no, 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 no. That doesn't how it works. Yes, you have budget cuts, but you you say, oh, instead of having a hundred million Cybermen in that season finale, we'll just have a hundred Cybermen in that season finale. Hey, well, if you want to play with budget cuts, will you do what they did with John Pertwee? You make them Earth based. Now, yeah. I'm not saying you'd have to make every single one of them Earth based, but there's enough that you get by. Yeah. But the story shouldn't be the one that gets affected. No. The story should not have to worry about the budget cuts because it's my problem with this season is just being basic plot problems. Exactly. It's nothing to do with the actors. It's nothing mm. to do with the generalised story. It's just that the scripts, they don't seem to have that same... Mm. But yeah. then, personally, I feel they've it, been degrading through the seasons. Yeah. Um, but even but the, Moff- just a, even the yeah. Moffat ones, like, say, even... I was not a huge fan... I liked some of the Matt Smith era. The early stuff I was not a fan. Mm. The later stuff, I really, I really grew into Matt Smith. And when you had a battle, you're like going, "I'll oh, wait for the Moffat one because at least Moffat's value. Moffat's been mm. Moffat's mm-hmm. say what you will about the guy, he usually writes really good. Yeah. And then you get things like say, um, uh, "A Good Man Goes to War," and it's like, "Oh, oh okay, um, yeah, that was not great. That was all right, um, okay." No, the second part of that, the second was the part one, was, was just oh. terrible. But that's what I mean when I refer to that. I'm referring to both yeah. of them. Okay, my my major problem with that is is that they look. They basically take the concept of Hitler and just turn him into a joke. Now, I don't know what the theory behind that is, whether it's meant to be, oh, we're now at a point where we see that kind of stuff as being that era, and the best way to deal with it is making it a joke. I Um, personally don't think that's the right thing to do. I don't know. I could be wrong. The only way I'll disagree with you... All right, so we moved outside. (laughs) I've forgotten where we were, so let's just... Let's 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 just... Let's, let's straight go through each, each of the situations as we go through, as we remember it. I was going to say, so, um, where do you want to start on the... Let's just get to the actual final episode. Let's just stop with the whole analysing Moffat and yeah, the season well, itself. Cause, well, you, yeah. you know what that Because we'll have like three hours just on saying how terrible season eight was, but um, let's get to this finale. Uh, okay, so where shall we start? Shall we start with... The thing that really bugged me about the second half, is that they wasted that beginning part with Clara when the whole thing is like Clara never existed it was a machination along I am the Doctor 
I would have loved to have seen that carry throughout the entire, especially because they did the thing with her eyes. You know, Louise Jameson's name came first for yep, Capaldi. Yep, they yep. did her eyes instead of his. I would have loved to have seen that continue on. I loved the idea because that looks like what they were building up through the entire season. What the Doctor was helping to build up. He was building her character up. He was letting her be independent. He was, she was doing that, especially with like you know the Moon, uh, Kill the Moon. And flatline, Clara is a very strong character in those ones. And I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be really interesting. We're going to see Clara become the Doctor. You know, if the Doctor's, you know, especially because the Doctor gets well captured by well unit. How cool would it be to see the Doctor get rescued by Clara? And all the I mean, Clara, maybe Clara saved the day, not in a really uh, Mary Sue contrived way as like the previous um, finale. You could even push that a little bit far that she goes a bit too far, and then for the sake of it. It's Danny who brings her yeah. back from that, and therefore it would justify him being around. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're yeah. not. Yeah. Except we get to kind of being turned back into the um, the weaker character almost five minutes later when Danny the Cyberman turns up and all this other stuff, and it's like, oh my god, you just had this perfect, perfect ideal, and there's this whole thing with the um, the masters going, I chose her. You know, I was, you know, she's the perfect, you know, she was my perfect choice. I got you two together. And you're going, okay, when did that pay off in that episode? It didn't. Mm. And it's mm. like, ah, it's so, there's so many things that because she even when you get to that end bit, she explains in reference oh, to the cyber thing, but she doesn't explain in reference to why she included Clara in it. Yeah. If there'd been some, as you said, some kind of a justification of saying, well, the reason I got her was that I knew I needed you to be at this point in your existence yeah. in order for me to be able to do it to if, you. if the whole idea is to get the Doctor to a certain point, you know, and then she needed Clara to help, help, help in her machinations, and, and, and especially, it was like, he's implied that she got... Uh, Clara and Danny together and then it's the killing off the Danny help for the, and it's like it's like the master has taken like sorry the mistress has taken like all these max these steps that did nothing it's like that's that's nah okay yeah so um, mm. the justification of that just seemed to have gone nowhere and that was really really um infuriating well the, the bit that annoyed me is there were and, and I'll sit down and I'll, I'll watch it is there's all these builds up in, in Dark Water and, and I really enjoyed it and the family really enjoyed it but one of the biggest ones that crops me is the very end scene which mm. is with Danny and he's going to press the delete button yeah but the next time you see him he's standing there with a kid but there's been no justification as to why oh, he didn't that, press the delete that button bloody kid as well Hey, I'm fine with the kid, and it was, I think it, it was a good way to bring it. It was a in good order. idea, but yeah. it just was like it was just so tacked on. Yeah, and that's the thing I hated about Hard uh, Hard Water, whatever it's called, Dark Water. That episode, <laughs> that episode should have been ten minutes. Yeah, that episode itself should have been ten minutes. They they had so much. Pa- it, it did remind me of another episode, but I can't remember which one. Um, but it just felt so drawn out. Oh, yeah, the whole thing of them, you know, going to the. You know, it reminded me of when they went to the um, Eccleston, when they went to the satellite, and did the whole Big Brother parodies and all yeah, that. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. It reminded me very much of that. You know, they get to the site, they spend about 20-odd minutes trying to find the bloody main office kind of thing. Mm. It felt so padded. Like, for example, I was thinking about it. Uh, if it wasn't the fact that it was preceded by that stupid Plaris one, which, again, you could have thrown that in any other spot. Mm. If you'd have had the death of Danny Pink... Go with this. If you had had the death of Danny Pink at the end of an episode, the list of the previous episode, for example, Clara Kim comes back and then you know she comes back after an adventure. She realizes you know she's desperate and and she calls him up, and they have the accident at the end of an episode. Oh, and then that pick would, up, and then yeah. pick up like literally yeah. the next episode. Have all that oh, that stuff with um, Clara trying to take out the Doctor, which of course ended up, ended up being just a dream, which was really infuriating again. No, I liked it, and, and I, was I liked the episode, but it was just the fact of oh, it was just a dream. I wanted to see how it was so Duex Machina and just so freaking. No, I didn't mind that. I I I, I thought it was okay, and I understand. I, I, why I'll you give did it a pass. I'll give you it did. a pass, even I, though it was like oh my god, this is cliche hell. And I love it just for the end line by him which hmm. is do you you know it's yeah. just just him swinging around that going, was that, that's, that's was why I, that's yeah. why i'll pay it is the fact of you know um i'm happy with that and then you know all that stuff everything after that all in you know going to the thing going to the thing the whole and the water itself was just such a non 
it was it was the joke smacking of almost the entire episode. It's like, hey, hey, we have this water. You can't see things on it. I bet you won't guess who who we're revealing. And it's like, oh god. Except that, of course, at this stage, I think we. I, I can't remember if I had the argument with you or someone else. The fact that the new this is a new Cybermen, and most most of the bodies of the new Cybermen are metal. They don't actually really have that many. They don't have bone structures that much anymore. It's not like an Iron Man suit. Yeah. Oh, hang on. What you've got to take into account is these. Are I the, know it's the um, the new the uh, original Cybermen, which I, which are called um, uh, Mondos. Mondos. That's it. Um, and Ex- except they still look like Iron Man. In as in, it looks like someone just took a Cyberman and an Iron Man and squashed them together. You know what? I don't mind them too much. I think that... I, I want more pokey haddy bits. I don't know. Yeah, but that's because we're children of the 80s, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do miss the boiler suits. I really do miss the I boiler suits. I miss the cricket gloves. I miss the cricket gloves. <laughs> oh, but they're, they're, more, they're more man than machine now. I think that's the other thing. I'm just like, oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's but, go okay. back and, and keep ourselves on track. Let's, yeah. Okay, because we're here. Let's discuss the Cybermen. Yeah. How do you feel about the new addition to the Cybermen? You would mean the... Um, the Iron Man. The, I, <laughs> yeah, I hate it all. Again, again, they're, they're now bloody Iron Man rip-offs. Okay, I have a question for they, you. They couldn't, they couldn't be satisfied with just being Borg rip-offs. Yeah. Do you think they went the wrong way? Because you see, no, to me, I, to me, I felt that what they'd gone and done is you look at them evolve since they've been here. Okay, first they turned up and they're basically just big ass robots go around yeah. and can shock you. Then they gave them the attachments of the blasters. Yeah, for um, which, made, which made sense yep, to a degree. Okay, then when you get them again in the uh, Max Smith's one, they've now not only got that, they've got the super speed, which they're not discussing ever again. Yeah. But to me, to know evolution yep yeah. okay that makes sense to me so to me when they decided to give them a flight abilities it didn't seem as though it was a natural evolution to me and I know this is going to sound really weird I would have given them I guess I'll call it a super jump because you're an, you're an enhanced human to a certain degree so therefore wouldn't the more logical step be instead of giving you rockets in your feet and here's a question where do they hide those rockets here's a better question where do they get the metal from no, I still. No, no, no. Think. Let's face it. Let's think about it. The metal, st- the magic water. Sorry, oh. the hard water. Whatever it is. No, let's let's leave discussing no, the zombie no, no. Cybermen in no, a no, moment. No. I still want to discuss the feet. Okay. okay. But you're talking about the physics of it. That's what I'm getting to. You're not talking because you go in. You say you require rocket fuel for that. Oh. But where do they get the metal that goes to build the Cybermen? Because when you see them crawling out of the graves, there's no. They're supposed to be dead. You don't bury a dead guy with metal. You don't encase them in a shell and believe, bury him. I believe, now, I could be wrong, I believe the rain is meant to somehow have metal particles. But again, I'm but just... That were, uh, <laughs> let's face it, that requires a lot more rain than a few drops on the bloody ground to yeah, transmute. <laughs> and the thing is, when all the Cybermen get out of the ground, the earth is still perfectly flat. If they were having to transmute... I, I could grok... Yeah, you'd, you'd have drops in the... If I, I could grok that they say, oh, maybe taking the elements out of the ground or something yeah. like that... But you will require a lot of freaking elements to do that. Basically, you'd end up with a bunch of pits. Yes, pits because. But the graves were even perfect. If you took, even if you just took the coffin size, yeah. So you took that, and you just had all these pits and them stepping out of these pits. Yeah, that would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. But my question is, okay, they have rockets. That's fine. I can deal with the concept of having rockets. But when they're all sitting there in their chairs, they you can still see their feet. So where do the rockets hide? Yes, it's. No, it, now, to me, to me, I, I went with my either the option of basically giving them the Hulk equivalent of the Super Leap, which I know yeah. sounds stupid, or the other one is going uh, Mister Miracle, as in giving them the anti grav yeah. yeah. boards, even if they had them grow out of their yeah. feet, and it was the anti grav. Yeah. Because I just think the flying capability, especially with so, it looking like rockets, the problem it, it doesn't again, look like again. Right. It looks exactly like oh, we're trying. They're, they're just trying to rip off Iron Man. Yeah, I think anti gravity. Yeah. Um, you know, a disc growing at the bottom there or some of that would have made a lot more sense because then they could have leaked. I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear this. It's probably because I can pick it up on the microphone, but I, I think every single time you, you're, you're ragging on the Iron Man, I'm hearing cheering in the background. We are, we're, we're recording this outside now. Um, and, and, and that's my thing there. It's just, yeah, I I have a problem with this flight cap. I don't have a problem with the hmm. flight capability. Yeah. And then... The yeah, it, was just a, it was just a... It was just a thing. It was a duex machina. The entire... 
the entire episode was written from the point is that things happen because they need to happen. Yeah, okay, and so let's let's move past that. Next one I want to bring up is when Moffat, they're on you're the better plane, than this. When they're in the plane, yeah, oh, there's the God. gentleman there's the gentleman in the plane who goes, How much can one cyberman how much damage can one cyberman do? Yeah. Now okay, you have rockets on your feet, you have blasters, and you have super strength, mm. and I'm not going to do any damage to your plane. Well, let's simply take it that I am that. Okay, mm. I'm one man on your plane. I could, I don't know, fly off to the fin mm. and bend the fin. Yeah. I could fly off to the wings. Yeah. I could bend the wings. You could fly through the cockpit, killing the pilot. Well, actually, I was—I actually had in my mind going through one of the engines. But I'm just saying, though. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was simply my thought. I thought to myself, well, even if I don't have super strength, I'm quite sure if I went through one of the engines, that's going to cause a bit of a problem. Yeah. If you've got flying capabilities, those windscreens, yes, they're probably rated to go against chickens, but not a guy in a big suit. Those are called inertia. There's physics. Although, as we described, well, actually, the physics yeah. in this mo- this episode are a bit... Yeah, if they're stealing a game from Iron Man, wouldn't it have made more sense for them to have gone through one of the engines? Because again... Yeah. St- got to steal from Iron Man 3, go the whole hog. Well, actually, I was you th- thinking... You Avengers. start throwing people at the plane. Well, I was thinking of Avengers. And that we'll get into. Shield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah, so there's the concept. Well, that made me... It, that, um, before we get to spoilers, that made me rage so much, but we'll go into that later. Which one's that? Um, how um, uh, what's it? The Brigadette um, survived her journey. We won't go into that. We'll go into that in a bit later. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, uh, when we get to that, I'll bring up an interesting point okay. that, that, um, that'll make you. That there is an in joke on top of the in joke on that. We're talking about the plane. Let's um, the stuff involved in the plane. Let's just say. Uh, let's just go straight to the master or the mistress. Um, off the top of my head, I like the idea of the master being a woman. I think that is one of those... It's like, I don't have any problem with the Doctor being a woman at some point. I really don't. My only thing with the Doctor is keep him British. Um, well, at least keep him from the, um, the United Kingdom. Um, I have no problem with Scottish or Irish or anything like that. But keep them... I don't, I don't want an American Doctor. Have him black, have him blue, have him, you know, transgender. But keep the character British. That's just all I, I think of. Um... But I do like the idea that they can play with the, the master and have the idea that even though they got a bit squeaky, because it's one of those things of everyone kind of knew who Missy was I'm, throughout the episode, and they're going, "Please let it be the Rani. Let, please, oh, let, let it please be um um another. Let's yeah. We knew, we knew it was going to be a female dialogue, and let's face it, we knew it was going to be the master. But we're just thinking, oh, please let it be someone else. Please let it be someone else. Please let it be someone else." Um, Let's, let, let it be Romana. Let it be a pissed off Romana. Yeah, well, got us, and it would have been good. Yeah. Well, when they made the comment, um, and it was it was the one that you abandoned. Um, my wife goes to me at that point in time. You just stand there rambling off all these people that you abandoned. And the instant one came to me, it was a it was an, a pissed off right, a pissed off Romana. Now the bits of me, or even was, even Susan. That yeah. Was, exactly. Yes. Yes. And then I went. Ew, boyfriend. Oh, damn, she snapped. Oh. No, no, that's the thing. I was there going, you abandoned. Who? The one who abandoned. It's like, when did he abandon her? When when the master went all lightning Raiden style at bloody um, Rasslon at the end of time, whatever it was, yeah, and, he... and, you know, charge into the portal? Was that the moment that the doctor abandoned her? Yeah. And then, how did he break out of the time block as well? And how did he get regenerations again? Now, that said, there is a way around that. And here's something that we're all missing. Now, what the mistress was saying was that no longer do the events of end of time occur. To a certain degree, that, that's what she's saying. Okay? That's fine. Let's jump back then to the end of cool. season have, three. Can I have the like, tenth Doctor back then, please? <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> anyway, let's jump back here. Okay, so we jump to the end of Last of the Time Wars. Go. That end scene was of a woman picking up a ring. Oh yes. Now, what are we? What if we're all missing something? As in that this is the master in mind, but not the master in body. As in two hearts. <laughs> Sorry. But he never. But remember, the doctor never picked up on that. Why didn't he pick up on it when she put no, her hand it was, there? No, it was implied that he did pick up on it, but he didn't realise what he picked up on in the episode. 
and she's because she said she got and the, and the thing is as well that ring did come back because that's how they used to resurrect the master in the end of time but the end of time no longer exists well technically it still does because the, the doctor was there and doctor solidifies the fans yeah but but it was her who was saying that because of what he did so what if in actual fact now this is only me just throwing it around there yeah what if the master that we've got isn't actually a regeneration and it's simply somehow the master possessing that woman now uh, again that's just up in the it air it still makes no sense okay that's it no, really just, doesn't make any sense well really does this hang make on. as much I was going to say hang on this entire episode really ultimately makes no sense okay. like the whole thing with Osgood as well that really pissed me off now that you was... see I'm again I'm, I'm fine with the female master I think to me it would have been better if it was the Rani now the reason I say that is if you go and watch Rani episodes hmm. She is basically a mad scientist. Mm. And that's what this episode felt like. Yeah. It's more of the plot of a mad scientist as opposed to someone trying to take over the world. Yeah. So in my mind, it fell into that slot of being Rani. So I was quite... And, and the way she acted, if you go and watch yeah. Kato Ma, yeah. you go and watch her in those episodes, and that's how she's playing it as well. And again, that's why, to me, it slotted in so well. The, the only thing I can think of is that they went... We don't want to introduce... We don't want to say it's the Rani because then there's a the whole thing of... Uh, even though I know we know for a fact that Moffat knows the character... You know, knows the history and all that type of stuff. He's a huge Hoogan from, from decades ago. Um, the idea is that you can't... You know, we can't introduce the Rani because then, you know, Dr. Dickus, then you know, the other Time Lords and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of reasons to not do it. But at the same time, it's like... I'd rather have the Rani turn up... For no, I won't say no apparent reason, but like again, maybe she, and because let's face it, there's now a precedent of time lords escaping the time war. Mm. Let's face it, and if the Daleks can come back, maybe the and yeah, if the the stuff I have at the end of time, like the time war and all that stuff, maybe the fractures are coming, and maybe the time lords again slowly coming back, being reintroduced, all that type of stuff. Why not just have the, have it the damn bloody Rani, and then just build her up as the Rani, not of this whole thing, and then you could just replay the fact of. You know, no one's ever... Let's, okay, let's face it. Anyone who's a Hoopian and never saw... I've only seen, like, say, Matt Smith. Never saw Tenant. They don't know who the Master is anyway. Anyone who picked up on the new episodes of, with Capaldi. They don't know who the Master is anyway. You kind of don't have to rely on the old continuity. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm your old nemesis, the Rani. That's all you really need. And that should be enough, you know. And, it, or, and if you need anything, all the Doctor needs to say is... The the Rani is one of, you know one of the big you know old my old nemesis and you know you know, you thought the master is bad <laughs> the Rani's even worse kind of thing. No, my my biggest gripe is is it anything to do with having a female master? No. Hey, that's fine. That was I a can, good idea. I, I, I had a few problems with beginning with, but I can deal with them. And mm. again, with a female doctor, it's something we've got to accept that's going to occur. Mm. My only hope is that when we do have a female doctor, that then four we'll have a male companion mm. because therefore it evens it out. Yeah. Okay. I know a few people are still waiting on Joanne Lumley. <laughs> I'm one of them. Curse, curse of fatal death. I yeah. I, I would quite happy again. That. Moffat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then I also was partially waiting for Hugh Grant. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still looking for um oh what's his face uh, Richard E. Grant, who was the uh, non uh, the non canonical uh, ninth Doctor. For now you saying that could you actually therefore make curse of fatal death? an actual proper episode because yeah. you could say the great intelligence was there and manipulated events now yeah. remember the great intelligence went down the timeline yeah. so Maybe. you know <laughs> technically speaking you could say it does exist because it, but anyway we'll leave no, that for another no, time no, 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 no. Oh, okay God. my gripe with this is <laughs> is the whole boyfriend concept yeah that's just it, it just never sat well it was only sat well because it was, it was it felt a bit icky but it was one of those things where it's like it was almost just forced upon the idea I like the idea and all of a sudden, just changed changed the dynamic in a bad way. It's not the fact that it, it was does just, work, and I'll explain to you why. But yeah. it's just one of the things of like I like the fact that the Doctor's almost like repelled by the idea, mm. and and then it just gets worse and worse. But um, it's just one of the things of like it just it didn't sit right though because of the ick factor. It was just the fact that it just didn't seem in character for the Master. No, and here's why. Yeah. Game last of the time lords. Yeah, there was a bit What's of bromance the there. Offer? that the Doctor makes to the Master. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's still not... <laughs> I will take you away in the TARDIS with me. Now, yeah. if I've got the hots for someone, and someone says to me, <laughs> come and jump in my car, it'll just be you and me, you know what? I'm going to take you up on that. You'll I'll start play. singing David Hasselhoff? 
<laughs> I'm just no, I wasn't. I was going to say jump in my car, but anyway. No, because he did a cover of jump in my car. <laughs> Have you seen that? Hey, I, I'm going to keep my memory <laughs> of David Hasselhoff. He's a very special photo. Oh, you got your own. That's right from uh, yes. Supernova. Yes, the one that technically shouldn't exist, <laughs> and it involves a TARDIS. <laughs> uh, so you're saying that uh, jump in my car is now a continu- in continuity with Night Rider. <laughs> <laughs> Are we writing, are we writing better Doctor Who episodes in this podcast alone? So what you're saying is just take photos of Jasmine in her pram and do the whole season. Yeah, um, she's like a lot less of a Mary Sue than Clara is. Right. Okay. Anyway, okay. So we're going back to the master. master. Okay. Now, th- th- I just don't think it plays out, and it doesn't play out in the fact that it just it does. It seems like it, it, it's an odd one. It, if, if you've had these feelings for this person for so long, wouldn't you have done something? Previously, yes. and, and, and as I said, Last of the Time Lords is the one that really stands out to me. Is that someone's made the offer to me to go off with them, even though it's not right? My and let's say she's being a stalker. My stalker mind's going to say to me, "Well, even though they don't necessarily want me now, if I get in there with them, mm. I can work them over. I can make them accept me for who yeah. I am." So if it was me and I was the master and I had feelings for this guy, I would have gone, "Damn, yep, yeah, let's go and do it." Adios, everyone. Mm. I've got what I wanted. I'm alone with him in the tarps. But we do have... The thing is, we know there's a history between the Master and the Doctor. And not just the fact that we know there's a history as adversaries. We know there's a history of a friendship. We've never really seen it, apart from some non, non-canonical non stuff. I mean, talking about in-series. Let's just talk TV mm. series. Um, oh, we, well, hang on. You want to talk in-series? Go John Nathan Turner. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I mean, back, I, no, I mean, back in the in the academy days and all that type of stuff. We, yeah. we we've only heard hints of this thing, so unless it was a really, it really was a all boys school. Let's just go to that point just for a bit of squeak. But you know, we know there's this deep history, and let's face it, the Doctor, as much as he probably hates who the Masters become, you do get that sense that he's still there's still a part of him that that wishes oh. his friend was back. I, I think there's so, a definite bromance there, but I don't think it's to that point. It's, of, it's not a romantic. It's not a romantic link. Uh, it is, but it's not a physical yeah. lustful. No, it's but, uh, me and my buddies. Yeah, it, well, it's it, it's. Uh, I'd say that it's, it's it's more like a bond, but it's not necessarily you know. I've always wanted to you know get in your pants kind of bond. No, it's, it's the I would love to have you beside me and be. Because it's that thing, I want us to be Batman and Robin. Let's let's okay. Let's face it. If if the Doctor turned evil and teamed up with the Master, <laughs> the universe is fucked. If the Master went good and teamed up with the Doctor, there probably wouldn't be any crime anywhere. You know those t- you, those two. T- I those don't two, think it'll work. Those two forces by them, oh yeah probably then go to hell. But I'm just saying that those two forces work together. Except the fact that they're diametrically opposed in viewpoint. Yeah, you see, when they do work together, and if you ever want to see them really working well together, is go and watch oh. um, John Pertwee's. You know, yeah, when, yeah. when the master realizes that whoever he's joined has decided to turn against him, you yeah. watch the two of them, and they're just like, boom, let's yeah. get into it. But I don't think it would work well. I think if the doctor did turn evil, I know it sounds weird, I think the master would turn good. Yeah, yeah. And an example of that can be the trial of the Time Lord. Hmm. You look at the fact the Valyard is meant to be a bad version of the Doctor. Yeah. Look who rescues him at the end of the day. It's actually the Master. Well, now, even, even you go into the Five Doctors where it's the whole thing where, you know, the reason why the Master wants to go and rescue him is because it's that, you yeah, know, that whole idea is that, you know, the, there's a bit of the irony in there and there's a bit of the, oh, you know, I'm going to save the Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bonus being I get a new set yeah. of lives. But, yeah. you know, mostly I'm just doing it so I can walk up to him and go, you owe me! <laughs> yes. There's... <laughs> All that I love all that interplay, and it just that's why I just felt so left field when it's like I mean that's the thing, even though we knew <laughs> that moment where she, Missy goes up to the doctor and just snogs him, it's like I think they're going, we're waiting for the, we know it's going to be revealed to him in the master, we know it's going to be revealed to the master. Yeah. That's just squicky. You do realise you can actually prove that it's existed for a long time. This bromance between the two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Here's yeah. the point. Go Does back to the beginning me? of when the Master was first introduced. Terror yeah. of the Autons. The companion in that is Joe Grant. Hmm. 
The only reason Joe Grant leaves is because she finds a younger version of the Doctor. Uh, yeah, seriously. God, can you imagine? She would stay, so for, she would stay forever up. if it was Matt Smith. And that's also the first episode that Joe Grant turns up in, The Terror of the Autons. So maybe the Master turns up because he knows what's going to happen with her and he sets the wheels in motion. <laughs> the next time he turns up is The Deadly Assassin. But the deadly assassin actually begins with a hand of fear when the doctor receives a telepathic summons, which ironically stops and says that Sarah Jane can't come with him yeah. anymore. Who sent that? De- yeah, the master. The master. So the master has decided to stop the relationship between Sarah Jane. Here's, here's an interesting question. This is just not in canon. Um, was there a reason why they did a? Uh, yeah, I know they want the you know whatever reason Sarah Jane left. You know, the contract runs out or. Actress did one, you know. Although I don't get the feeling that Liz Slater never wanted to leave Doctor Who, but um, yeah. Uh, was there a reason that they decided not to have a companion for an episode? Because I must admit, that is one of my, the Daily Assassin is one of my favourite episodes, and it's one of those episodes that shows you don't need a companion for Doctor Who. Well, and you all that. that stuff was just really great that's what it was it yeah. was I think it was Tom Baker who came up and swung around and said I don't think I need a companion and that's what it was it oh, was their okay. attempt at that to say yeah. he doesn't need a companion supposedly it didn't work as well as they'd hope it would yeah. I don't think the setting I, I, of making it on Gallifrey without having a companion works hmm. because you've got but I'm a super it, intellect talking to you who's a super intellect but how do I make but you still common had, man? you still had all the other characters that could act as the bouncing oh, off yeah, point. Yeah. And so, for example, when... I'm going to go back to season... Try and push this back in season eight. When Clara left at the mid-season... Like roughly the mid-season point. Let's just call it mid-season point. Mm-hmm. I was genuinely hoping that the next one, which is going to be about the... Um, the, Mer- the Orient Express... Again, Starship Tr- Titanic 2. Because <laughs> if... Steven Moffat has shown to be pro- proficient at something. It's ripping off older episodes. What I think I was, I was desperately hoping was because I, I think you know, I was like, yeah, Clara's going to come back, but I was really hoping that one episode Clara wouldn't going to be in it, and we get maybe a hint that there might be another companion or so, kind of bit like the um, David Den, David Tennant specials. This this whole thing of like. Let's just have an episode of the Doctor running about by himself. Maybe this is why he needs Clara. He feels like that's why he needs someone like Clara back in his life or something like that. Just the whole idea of that. And the thing I get from that particular episode is that it was all... I, I want to say it was written with that in mind. Because if you look at that episode, Clara does nothing. No, she is just superfluous. She does do something. The only thing she does is talk to the, that woman. That's no, 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 it. No, no, no. She does do something. And I just like to point out that I love my wife. That dress. <laughs> yeah, I'll pay that, but at the same time, it's like I'm talking the story rights, and yeah, this has no, always no, been no, my yep. see. This yep. is my problem. I've and I go into huge rants about Man of Steel. It's never about the the, the costumes or anything. It's always about the story. Yeah, you say that Frank Skinner could have been his companion, and yeah. was technically his companion yeah, for it, that episode. It was one of those scenes that it's you could how it ends between the two of them. Yeah, you could have. You could have you. You didn't need that bit with Clara in it. You really did not need that bit. With, you did not need Clara in that episode, and that was the one of the. It, I wouldn't say it brought the episode down for me with the fact that Clara just didn't do. It just felt so out of place after that previous episode. All of a sudden, Clara's back in the in the mm. in the TARDIS, and she's. You know what that reminded me of. Speaking of ripping, Stephen Moffat ripping people off, he rips himself off because if you look at the end of, um, school reunion, where. Rose is pissed off at Mickey during the Titus, yep. and, and immediately in the next again. episode, so, yeah. actually, they're all happy families. It's almost the exact same thing. No, the reason for that is, and it's probably the exact same thing, <laughs> was that the guy who wrote Age of Steel and Rise no, no. Inside Me, no, 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 he hadn't been informed of how School Reunion ended. But the episode that came after School Reunion is Girl in the Fireplace, the Moffat episode. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. No, but it's the same thing. Yes, he, didn't, been, he didn't know the ending. Informed. He didn't know the ending. He didn't know Mickey was in there. He didn't yeah. know that. And it was supposed to be immediately afterwards, and he didn't know that they were, yeah. they were pissed off. Or at least Rose was pissed off. Well, <laughs> you, do, you do understand the theory that it can't be directly afterwards. I know. Afterwards. But the thing is, the reason why it's, it's allegedly directly af- afterwards is because Mickey says, my first ship and I get... On my first time out, I get a starship. And the other joke being that he's still wearing the same clothes, whereas everyone else has had enough time to change. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, because the whole thing is that he didn't. He just kind of turned up. He turned up with them then. 
Yeah. Uh, the, the whole room theory with Doctor Who is a bit... Well, at least the new stuff is a bit niffy. Yeah. Because at least you saw it in, say... I don't remember in... I don't remember anyone else, really, but I remember specifically in the Peter Davison era, you saw different rooms. Yeah. You know, you had the close room. Yeah. Everyone had their own different quarters. Rooms, yeah. Yeah. Now, you continuing on with that, with this theory of the master always having it. If no, you're continuing with the theory, but go on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I still have a long theory that holds true. Okay. No, no, that's cool. All right, all right, okay, so what we get is Logopolis is the next one. Yeah, I was going to say Logopolis, is, yeah. Okay, all right. What does Logopolis introduce us to? Uh, well, not as Logopolis. What's the one after? Um, is it Logopolis? Oh, God, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've seen them. Oh, hang on. you got Logopolis. Logopolis. That's Logopolis. the one with the... Um, no, it's Keeper Tracking, Logopolis. Yeah, and... okay, so it is Logopolis. That's the one yes. I'm talking about. Who gets introduced in Logopolis? That's, um, oh god, not him. No, 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 no. her. That was not, um... Tegan T- Baker. Tegan. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, Tegan. Oh, I'm now, thinking, now, Keeper Tracking was, um, the other, oh god, I can't think of it. Okay, now, play with... Nessa. Yeah, yeah. Keeper Tracking was Nessa, wasn't Nissa. it? Nissa, now, yeah. Nissa, do you think that when he became the fifth Doctor, there would have ever been a relationship between him and Nissa? If they'd been able to do it? Do I reckon... a possible romantic If there was a possible romantic relationship, it probably would have been them too. Yes, so how do you yeah. stop that romantic relationship? Well, you add in the annoying Australian. Bingo! <laughs> and who's responsible for doing that? Jonathan Nathan Turner. Actually, I was going to say the master, but... but <laughs> sorry, so I, couldn't again, I, couldn't st- I couldn't help how, myself. How do you stop? How do you stop your boyfriend from getting hit on by another woman? Bringing uh, in an even uh, more annoying woman. I was just going to say, I can't, I don't know, I can't hire Jonathan Nathan Turner at the moment. Okay, so, so you follow me on that one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that sticks around until she goes. Okay, but that's 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 more fanon. I must admit, that's not exactly you know re- being revealed. It's not the it's not the master flat out saying, you know, oh, I paid you up with this companion. <laughs> hey, I'm still going with it. Okay. Or maybe he forget he forgot. T- maybe he misspelled Clara and thought T- he think Tegan and spelled it Clara. But anyway, it still goes. Okay, <laughs> fits in. Fits in. All right, then then the next big step would be the planet of fire. Which, technically speaking, was meant to be... Planet of Fire is technically meant to be uh, the Master's last episode. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, really? Okay, and it's also Perry's first one. All you need to know is at the end of it, the the play was was that um, the Master was was meant to die. Yeah. Okay. And what it was meant to be, his last words were, you wouldn't show mercy to your own. Yeah. And the implication was that John Nathan Turner wanted to say his brother. Yeah. Okay. Now, whatever you put in there, it always comes off. That also, come, that also leads into the whole lung barrow stuff as well they were trying to start. Now, won't you show mercy to your own boyfriend? <laughs> Fits in? Yeah. Okay. I, I still think you're reading a little bit too into this as an old Hoovian. <laughs> Although I'm you're probably saying, the most justified. I'm just saying. Okay, then we go to Trial of Time Lord. If you go and look at that, the Master is partially I try not, not to. I, I try not to. It's got Colin Baker in it. I'm sorry, I love Colin Baker. He's Colin Baker's a, legend. He's the nicest guy you'll ever oh, meet. He's damn straight, he is. <laughs> he's awesome. It's just those episodes. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, and the Master is partly responsible for helping to save him then. Yeah. Um, uh, so while, yeah, he's going a bit bestial. Yeah. Which, you know, take that whichever way you want to. But it does. You yeah. could sit there and justify it if you need to. To get uh, by. And, I let's, still a, have a a, and let's face it, Doctor Who the movie, the Doctor wanted his body. I just thought of that. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, you know what I thought about the most horrifying thing, and I apologise for this, people. Think about it: the snake goes into Eric Roberts' mouth. Yeah, um, all I'm going to say is Rule Thirty Four. It does exist. Mm, exactly. That's that's just. So yeah. yeah the, okay. See again. Um, I can probably get past a lot of that stuff if it wasn't for the fact. Again, I I think the if you want to go for padding, again, I think that first episode is about for me. The, do you know what their cliffhanger should have been? The cliffhanger should have been there's all that shit happening on the um, on the plane. Yep. You've established the whole idea that the um, the world wants the Doctor to lead them. Yep. Which I thought was a great idea. Yeah, it might and it good played in, it played into the ending so well. All that stuff should have been the first episode. So the ending should have been when um, Clara gets abducted she, that, all that stuff you know, with her being the doctor and all that make sure to play that whatever but when Clara is abducted well, by what we <laughs> what we of course already knew immediately because hell if this didn't get telegraphed 5,000 fucking out <clears throat> um, when she gets abducted by the Danny Cyberman of course she doesn't know it's the Danny Cyberman 
but that would have been a great that was a good cliffhanger in fact I was screaming at that I was like that was the better cliffhanger than the previous cliffhanger mm. you know you could have had all that stuff you could have condensed it got rid of all that shitty padding moved that death scene to the previous episode which would have given it so much dramatic oomph start the episode with Clara really in that at that moment it would have been brilliant and that cliffhanger there and then you could have used that all that time in the second episode to do the aftermath to do all that padding and maybe build up the tension you know the doctor's plane going down how is he surviving all the fact of you know, oh he jumps out into the TARDIS even though he was just literally standing next to it for 10 fecking minutes while the, the plane was smashing around him couldn't and here's the other continuity piece of shit that I really fucking hated okay Moffat made this huge deal, and this is what plays into the other thing. Moffat made this huge deal about the Doctor being able to open up the TARDIS door with a click of his hands, and they do it in the Matt Smith. Clara does it in the 50th anniversary. All of a sudden, no, you need your keys or she's never going to get back into the TARDIS? What? The only thing I can think, and again, this is just me playing around with ideas, that because they were in a situation where the TARDIS knew it was open to attack... Yeah it locked itself up but because it wasn't it explained it didn't make sense yeah because it didn't explain itself it yeah. doesn't sit there nicely yeah you know, but, even if the doctor said you know I know the mass is on board I'm locking it with a key exactly five yes. seconds yep yep thank you yep yeah exactly it's, that's, that's, that, the, this, yeah. that's what I'm saying the story on this is just really poorly done they don't they just they, do you know what they wanted, they wanted to do they wanted to have this, the whole thing of the doctor flying down and putting the key the dramatic thing and you could have still done all that with a click of the fingers, having flight. How cool would it be? Him flying into the TARDIS and almost, you know, like him inside the TARDIS, you know, getting onto the thing and hitting the thing too. Or, or even even better would have been he clicks it open, he comes inside and literally just skids on the floor yeah. or something and then just grabs hold of things and realizes he's gone too far or something. Yeah, yeah, actually have him fly into the gravity well and do. So. You could have done some. Because, again, that was. One of my only, I won't say problems, it was just the fact of it just made me kind of groan as the whole thing in the 50th anniversary where the TARDIS is being flown in by helicopter and the Doctor's holding on to it. And it was like... It no, made, no, 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 no. I know why that occurred. Go on. You and I didn't like it, but guess who did like it? Probably Moffat, but... No. Who did? The kids? The kids? Yeah. No, I mean, I kind of get it for that. Mm. But it's just one of those things, you just there going really did you really need to do it like that and the only other thing but, I can think is it's because it gives it, it enough gave it, length it, for the music to be played yeah. and for it was a, and for a, it was a big damn hero moment which is what they were trying to do here but I'm saying it just was nothing of like the continuity they just make it just fucking just go why did you I think I was again shouting at the TV why the hell didn't you bloody click your fucking fingers hmm. Funny, I'm turning down my language I think she being a dad's turning down my language on this I usually I usually will say fuck um <laughs> it's just things like that and um and it's just that and and killing off Osgood just oh man it just it felt unwarranted it's the, and it's that's the other thing I don't like about this new master right. is that you know when the master killed off someone else it was usually because like you know he, he didn't want to leave a witness behind or it was you know it was to further his own plans he didn't just I'm going up to a random person and murdering them. Ha ha, look at a random person. I'm murdering them. Ha ha. There was no... I like the I liked the play with Osgood. Yeah. But it just felt like... Osgood... If she, if she probably she'd walked up to him and, and or walked up to her and gone, I'm doing this what? because it, makes, it will make the doctor hurt. Yeah. Then boom, you know. Yeah, but then the problem is, of course, it just doesn't pay off. And then it's like the same thing. It's like someone else that's pointed out to me. you got two armed guards... Directly behind the master, <laughs> but wait, this is where it gets stupid. Not only has she revealed to have taken her handcuffs off, she has enough time to get out the lipstick, reapply the lippy, you know, and go, "Ha ha! I'm going to kill you all!" Before they react and go, "Oh, she slipped out of a bond," and then she kills them both, and. Osgood is supposed to be incredibly smart. She's so, so, so she's been shown to be incredibly smart. If I'm an incredibly smart scientist, and the master's there, showing the thing. Let's face. It, okay, let's say for example, it takes about say twenty seconds to disable both the guards. 
why isn't she there pounding on the damn alarm or intercom or something they would have had yeah yeah to talk to the doctor saying the master is loose oh look I, I think it's and generally it accepted so that, dumb I, I think it's generally accepted that her death was so wanted unjustified it was, anything I else. don't mind Osgood dying if it was for a good reason yeah. and it was supposed yeah. to be but it was just so superfluous and it lost its appeal because then you went and threw Kate out the window yeah and you know, okay, I know it wasn't the window but you know what I mean you, you just went uh, oh okay, I've done one she, let's do the next it was a it was a death off screen you knew she was going to come back now and, and as soon as I as soon as I like, hang on it's bringing back death they do the whole thing with the doctor talking about saluting they will get to that now brother. when the doctor talks about saluting the brigadier I never got to salute the brigadier and they're going uh oh Kate's alive. We know who this is. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now, you turned how, how the you Brigadier feel, into a fucking Cyberman! How do you feel about the Brigadier being the person who shoots the Master? You, I am so glad it's not video. You can see, you could see the fucking rage on my face. That was so how, bad. How do you feel about him being the one who shoots the Master? That was not good. Here's the joke. No. Do you think the reason they had her blast him because they couldn't have him deck out a woman because uh, think about it the five doctors he's yeah. the one who takes out the yeah it's like uh, yeah. and that was the other thing it's like there's this whole thing about the you know, oh, yeah, the, ma- you know the master oh, and then she just gets vaporised in a second it's like yeah and there's the play with her TARDIS where there's her TARDIS and yeah it's just it was just so the ending that's what I'm saying the ending was just so rushed it was you had all this padding in that first one you could have just why not pace it for that second mm. half do mm. get rid of all that unnecessary shit in that first one. Oh, do you know about the controversy about the whole three words thing yes yeah well we won't go into the con- okay so the quick controversy is the three words is do not cremate and it caused a whole shit stir of thing the problem the only thing I'm going to say is that that ultimately led to nowhere either because this whole thing of like the metaphysical the death, the sound of the dead. It's like, oh, the, the whole idea is to say, well, we don't want you to cremate the bodies because then we won't have fuel for the Cybermen. But the problem is, of course, nobody knows about this because only people know about this go to 3W and nobody knows about 3W because it apparently exists no fucking where except Westminster Abbey and nobody knows it exists there except the people who have died who are not in a position to stop the cremations. It makes no sense. Ah, oh, it was a smart idea. It was a, a, a stupid idea in, in thing is an idea of like going the you know the dead and all that type of stuff and and then you know, the, then you get the other stupidity it's like apparently now the master has used her TARDIS to go back through history and record the deaths of everyone I think it, it's it's implied that he, she's recorded the deaths of everyone related to the doctor so where is everyone else that's ever died with the doctor yeah and but <sighs> so now apparently there's this whole the afterlife is now this fucking computer where all these They're people to imply it's meant to be the matrix and, and it's like oh my god the matrix more, of Gallifrey and but, even yeah. worse it's supposed to be a computer that saves the brain patterns of everyone who's died and the, at the point of death yep kind of cool idea but then it's the whole idea is that it exists in within its the, all the digital you know the stuff we see is like its own realm, yep. which then the master can travel in and out of, which I can I can probably grok you know she could just plug in to a certain degree that makes a degree of sense. She but, uses a mobile. But but now we have to contend with the idea that the downloaded memory of a boy can then be teleported into the real world, right at the end. Yeah, I know. It's just, that was yeah. fucking stupid. However, I think the theory. I like the idea. I like the idea that Danny can't come back. You know, he exists yep. there. And he can't come back. Yep. But then it's like I have a chance to teleport. One thing. It's like, how, uh, how can you? It's it's data. It's not like he teleported into another body or another cadaver. I think oh, it, the, the, the the thing always is that the the problem is with it. it it's is that he's gone and looked up Doctor Who history, okay? But he's not looked up enough of it. The reason I say that is, uh, in Deadly Assassin, if you look at it... Uh, well, you have the Matrix the, the in the... Doctor, yeah, 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 yeah. connects via his brain patterns. Yes. It connects that way. Um, in the Fifth Doctor's... Uh, what, what is it? 
uh, Ark of Infinity. Ark of Infinity. It gets um, trapped you, in there. It gets trapped in there. Yes. Okay. Right. Fine. In the Trial of the Time Lord, yeah. one the Master creates oh, oh. a backdoor key. Yeah. No, I have no problem with the idea that you can teleport into it if you're a full-bodied human, yeah. a full-bodied living being, teleporting in, and you can get teleported out because that's you know part of the construct. But your problem is is that if I'm digital data, how do I get a body? Yes. If if you only download in the brain and you exist as a full person in the real in the matrix world, you, you can't just teleport out. You, yeah. can, you don't have the data. Yeah. It, it just doesn't happen. You don't. They didn't tell. They don't download your body. They download your mind. Mm. You, the mind. It's that thing where, in that matrix, in that reality, you know, the visual input is just a representation. Mm. It's like, let's say, in the actual Matrix movie, it's the fact of, if you look at the Matrix code, it's just those green numbers yeah. and stuff going down the screen. Um, it's more the fact of, it's your brain um, interpreting that data to make it into something you could recognize. Yeah. So, you've just, def how can you teleport out the data into a body? I know, it's not even teleporting the data into a body. You're going through, a, a, like a... a oh, no, Wormhole? Just, yeah. It was like... Argh! It would be funny if like a little USB comes out of the wall. It's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this, you stupid bastard? No, he's a fucking PE teacher. Now, do you think the reason that that everything that's been going on and all the stuff's been going on, and do you think the safety net is the Christmas special? See, this is the problem I have with everyone when I have a rant about Man of Steel. It's like, oh, they're just setting up for the next Batman movie, or the, the Batman Superman movie, or the next Superman, or the Justice League movie. It's like, the problem I have with that is that you can set things up for future episodes. Not a problem. That's the thing. You can't have your storyline depending on to be resolved in a future installment like that. It's the one, same thing that screwed up Pirates 2. It's the same thing that screwed up Matrix 2. You're then depending on people sticking around for the next one because you're leaving your main plot unresolved. You can have stuff coming on. Like the whole, yeah, the whole safety... And let's face it, we know Danny Pink's going to come back because we know what Clara's timeline is going to be back. And one of the things with Doctor Who is that time can be malleable, but usually not when the Doctor's involved. When a Time Lord is involved, usually the timelines are very solid because the, time lo the, the sheer presence of a Time Lord solidifies time. That's why when things get... With the time I mean, Lord, that's, that's the reason you can go back for Amy and Rory. Yeah, that's usually the plot convenience. You, you know, the, 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 when, they come, when you get the Tarnus and the Doctor involved, the timeline gets. gets that's why you know, if the Doctor does go back in time to fix something in his own timeline, it get, can get really fucked up. Of course, there's uh, things to it, but it's the idea, yeah, that's why he couldn't go back and save Rory and Amy because he's already been there. He can't just go, simply go back, except for the fact, of course, why couldn't he just give it back after he already escaped the house and blah blah blah? blah. Yeah. Not going into that. Yeah. I mean, why didn't you just drive from New Jersey or why didn't oh, yeah, you go yeah. there a year later or why didn't yeah, you yeah why don't you just park the TARDIS outside and just there, stroll there is in. an answer to that and the reason would be that no I can't keep going back to your timeline because yeah. what the Weeping Angels did to you yeah. affected your timeline if I go there again I'm going to cause a yeah. break in time space continue but the you rupture. didn't say that yeah uh, but that's also that's been implied since Old Who as well you know that's um, oh god I'm trying to think of the episode but the, you know the whole Earth idea Earthshock Earthshock yeah why well, couldn't just go in and save um, Adric at the end? Because <laughs> nobody wanted to, but... That said, that is an awesome episode to die in, I mean, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Although the, uh, the uh, semi-sequel after that is pretty funny as well. <laughs> <laughs> the what happened next bit was just so funny. Um, I was alive! <laughs> And Adric, uh, the funny thing is, uh, Adric predates Wesley Crusher, but apparently there's something else that predates Adric. Um, roughly the same trope, you know, the annoying, the annoying know-it-all kid. And so, I just, I can't remember what it's from, but, um, <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks it's Wesley Crusher, but all the humans go, no, nah, Crusher's, uh, you know, Crusher's all, you know, Crusher's nothing, look at Adric. Or well, it's even worse when you hear, um, Americans say Adric, or, a and they call him Adric. It's like, there's episodes of Doctor Who where he's called Adric, he says Adric, but they only see the text version, they think it's called Adric. It's like, no! 
It means it's going to be a series from the 1980s <sighs> or the 1970s. I think it might be something from the 70s. I can't remember. I don't think it was Black 7. Oh, either way, but... Um, no, all right, yeah, further investigation. So apparently there's there's someone older than Adric um, in that, of that trope. I've got to find out. But um, oh, I can't wait for him to come back. I'm, so, I'm sure Moffat will introduce him somehow. Now, so... To me, I think I think the the thing though is is that with the Christmas special, yeah. we are going to have certain characters return, yeah. but I think it's going to be at a cost. So, for example, what's going to happen is is they'll say, "Fine, I'm bringing back Danny Pink, uh, possibly Osgood, maybe. maybe, but at the cost of bringing back the Master." Yeah, and or it, you go. or it could be that thing where it was felt that fact that this is not going to be Clara's last episode. Let's let's just be. Oh, polite. she's already admitted she's coming back. Yeah, it's one of the scenes of how it ended. It just was like this is not an ending episode. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't big or spectacular enough. And Clara again did nothing to kind of, the, all the prompts was there and all the delivery. I like the idea that maybe this is the Doctor's last gift to gift Clara is bring it back to any pink, yeah. and so they can go and have space babies, and the little soldier, so we can have that really shitty episode where and she, they can all go and hide under each other's beds. Yes. So we can all go and deal with that episode. That's the problem. It's like you know. Huh, isn't that, isn't that funny about Doctor Who genetics as well? Clara and Danny have kids who have kids and one of them looks exactly like Danny. Who knew? I'm okay with that. Ah. I've seen enough Doctor Who episodes to be okay with that. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I know. I'm just having a I'm just having a lane. But the whole idea of that is supposed to be this this hev what's the thing is I don't remember if it's outright said, but it's heavily implied that that is their kid or their yeah. grandkid. Yeah. And it's like but, but then I, yeah, I think it's either the grandkid or the great grand. great grandkid, grandkid, great grandkid. It's one of the two. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so the fact of you know, it can't be anyone else unless Danny has a twin brother. Well, the implication was was that that somehow Clara had become pregnant. Yeah. Before he. You know, but, the, but even man. yeah, but yeah. And anyway. So yeah, it's just that thing, and like uh, bring uh, it just. I haven't screamed that much at a, at a TV show in so long. No, I it was felt so bad. I've got to be honest. During Matt Smith's run, I did as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably my biggest gripe I have with my with the Eleventh Doctor is his fixation with his mother-in-law. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if I'm dying and I start having fantasies about my mother-in-law, what I lo- do what I love about that entire that entire scene. Both of them are bold. It's just wrong. It's wrong. I don't know who said that. I, I, and then the next episode, in deeper breath, again he mentions that he wants his mother-in-law. Well, listen, you mate. Hey, oh, I know we do. We, me, we, but I'm fantasizing about my mother-in-law. We, no, no, no. We do have continuity there. He has been obsessed with um, previous companions when he's dying. We got to go back to the tenth doctor. He visit all the companions. But that was kind of a that was kind of like a gift thing, yeah. You know. I'm but the, the fifth doctor. Well, all the companions come back, including his old boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> right at the end. Yeah. Hey, but that's cool. I'm cool with that. Yeah. That, that it, it made sense to me to yeah. sort of have that that it's playing around in his head. It, it, it's it's yeah. that whole thing that that made sense, and I thought it was a rather effective for its yeah. time. A yeah. rather effective way. I, to do I, it. I, I like. I liked. I did like the the death scene in um with Matt Smith. It it was poignant. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it did. It was a closing. It was oh, a closing Matt of Smith, his... yeah, Matt. I'm sorry. I, you know what? No, I did, I, I, and the Fifth it? Doctor as well. Yes, I yeah, agree. yeah. My, my biggest problem with, with Matt Smith's death scene is that you know what it does? It makes Clara Conan fodder. She didn't even need to be there. Well, thing because is, Clara hasn't been needed since um, the name of the Doctor. Clara essentially has become useless ever since she stepped into the time stream to the point where she should know everything about Doctor, and yet all of a sudden she knows nothing about the Doctor again. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like they erased her. It's like as soon as she stepped into the um, time doctor's time stream, they erased her personality. It's just yeah, I just she really didn't even do that much in the fiftieth anniversary, except you know talk to the uh, the uh, war doctor. Mm. She you know it was <clears throat> this is what I'm saying. It's like you know the the, the they could have done so much more with Clara, and as much as I really didn't like that, again recycling all the episodes from the. Oh yes, the pick which episode I'm taking off now. Yeah, in the Clara seventh 
the seven, the se- second half of the seventh season with Clara, and it was just like almost every episode was just ripping off another episode. I liked Clara as a character. You know, yeah. Despite as much as I thought some of the stories were a bit, sh- you know, shonky in that, I liked Clara as a character. And season eight, I don't like Clara as a character because she, all of a sudden she's just useless. Or, or useless or worse, just a bloody um, annoying cow who suddenly doesn't do anything. Except when finally she, you know, she has to take charge and she's good at it. Yeah. And it's almost like, oh, I've took charge. Well, better not do that again. Danny might not like it. You see, I'm okay with the, with the concept of where they were playing off with Danny. Yeah. Where they wanted to have the soldier versus yeah. the, the guy, you know. That made sense to me. I like the whole thing where it's like, you know, the soldier versus the officer. Because that seems one of the things that, like, the doctor doesn't, you know, the doctor has seen a lot of war and stuff like that and he doesn't think of himself as that kind of character but yeah. you know he tr- he really is yeah he doesn't like soldiers but the reason for him not liking soldiers has nothing to do with why the reasons Danny thinks, thinks he doesn't he likes like soldiers, soldiers. Yeah. he doesn't like soldiers because he's a in unit and he knows what they do yeah he doesn't like it because he's been the war doctor and he's been that soldier yeah he doesn't like he doesn't like the war he, I think it's because it Depending on which we look, yeah. he doesn't like soldiers because it reminds him of being a soldier. Yeah, and he doesn't. It's something that oh, that's how they I, blocked that, off. That's what he's I got. Now got to accept. That's what I got. Yeah, mm. you know, it's, he doesn't like. He doesn't like that side of him being shown. Mm. You know, and that's one thing. The one thing I did love about the end of um, the uh, in the end of the finale when the doctor goes, you know, when he finally answers that old question, "Am I a good man or a bad man?" He just goes, "I'm an idiot with a box," and it's like, wow, it took you an entire year to remember that. <laughs> You know, it's just I think like it was a good line, but at the same time, you just you almost face it because like, duh. You know what it was? It was like they were trying to bring back mystery. Yeah. But if you go and watch uh, Sylvester McCoy's season, yeah, the, the last season, is it season twenty? They did the same thing. Yeah. And I think it actually worked better when they did it with Sylvester McCoy than mm-hmm. when they've done it with Peter. And it's nothing to do with the acting. It's nothing to do. With, it's just there's not that implication. They don't play with it the same way they yeah. did. They don't. All you need to do is you don't need to do this big thing of the two of them sitting down there going, "Am I a good man?" Yeah. No. All you need to do is some offhand comment that he makes. But here and there, here's and the then they're making comments. Clara, you no, know, here's the thing. It, it, I would have loved that conversation if it had been towards the end of that year, towards yeah. the end of that season. It's like, am I a good man or a bad man? And Clara just going, I don't know. That probably would have been justifiable. When it's like two episodes into his run, and the Doctor's still trying to figure out who he is, and Clara going, I don't know. She should bloody know! Exactly. If anyone should know, she should be the person to know. Because oh. she's come across every Doctor. Yes! If there's, that's, a, that's the other problem. There's one person in canon who knows more about the Doctor than anyone else beyond the Doctor himself and perhaps the Master. It's Clara. Mm. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah. that's that's why it just gets really infuriating at how badly Clara's been handled it's like you've written this character to be yeah god mode Sue mm. and at the same time you then kind of regress to back to being like it, it's almost like no there's like no reason The uh, they invented a reason for Clara to be there and that was the phone call from the 11th Doctor to Clara saying you've got to be with him I need that I need he he needs your help. What? You need to be there for him. The problem is, guess what? She's hardly ever there for him because apparently, you know, he's off swanning about the universe for bloody years on end, weeks on end, without her. <laughs> to me, that that was another point that proved why I didn't like Deep Breath. There was so much on the Eleventh Doctor where it wasn't a chance for the Twelfth Doctor to shine, and even yeah. when he shines and he gets that moment, you know, that critical moment, which in uh, for Matt Smith, uh, for uh, David Tennant, it's yeah. the Christmas invasion when he gets up and he steps yeah. out of the out thing and boom, he gets straight into it. That whole speech, it's Matt Smith, it's when he steps there and has a go at the um, when they're all going on about Prisoner Zero, and he steps up at that point and spins around and goes, "Look me up." And yeah. yeah, Doctor, that yeah. was. And yeah. the thing is, that was written after like a lot of those other scripts. That's why, yeah, this mo- badass moment of badassness, and then it kind of disappears for about four or five episodes. Yeah, yeah, but I did. Yeah, yeah. but you, you're okay with that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, you come to, to, to. Sorry, just quickly. Yeah. Do you know the episode that made me go, "That's the Doctor with Matt Smith, the Lodger." That yes. was the very first yeah. episode I felt they wrote for Matt Smith. The rest yeah. of it was just like subpar. Do, David Tennant. Do you know which bit specifically? Uh, the headbutt. 
the head that bad part was so good because it's just it's the way he would do it which is yeah. bang <laughs> you know because Doctor does have limited telekinetic abilities where it's just like thing, uh, quick brain uh, head quick download bang oh it's so good that, that to me was the yeah it's that that yeah anyway now you don't look <laughs> at the it, Peter's one when he first steps in he has this moment where he stands up against what they refer to as the half face man yeah. He pulls off the thing up, does his big spiel, yeah. does it clear, and they all have it going, and it's great, you've got that moment. And then they go, oh, hang on, let's bring in the other guys now, and the moment dies. Yeah. And yeah. then they've yeah. got to try and build up another yeah. moment for him when he's up top. Let alone the fact that he's, he's currently dressed up like a piss-soaked uh, hobo. We won't go into that. <laughs> now, you saying that, I love that scene <laughs> that when she good. first turns up, and he's like, that was so cool. and it's everywhere. That was so good. That was, that was one of yeah. my favourite moments of that episode. Yeah, exactly. But when he steps up and he rips off the half masks and he does his big spiel, that's his moment. But yeah. his moment gets killed when they decide to bring in Strax and Co. Yeah. And then they have to do I another must that's moment the one, that's not as good. Uh, some of these, I do like Vesper, Strax and all that. And I'm so happy that they won't see any other episode this no. year. No, because if they, because that's the one thing I was getting really tired of in the mass being. It's just like, oh, we're just getting back to Strax and Vesper and that. And I love them as characters, but they got to the point where they were so just overused. Yeah. And that said, I love the play between Clara and Strax. Yes, that was some of the funniest stuff. Just watching the two of them play off against yeah. each other. I think, yeah, that, that that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's that was the one thing I was going to be annoyed with the mass. That's then a lot of that problem comes from the Good Man Goes to War episode, where it's just the fact of you bring in and I keep getting this thing of like oh that's just how how Moffat likes to play when the, the fact that he brought in all these brand new characters that you were supposed you were almost designed to care about mm. before you actually met them and then you met them later for, and every single time I go to someone and say no, I'm, I think that's actually really bad storytelling it is it's really bad storytelling to basically you know just bring in characters and say you have to care for these and their characters got developed later on very much later on but at that point you're going you, you got this inkling I like the idea you got this inkling that you've had these characters that have a past of the Doctor mm. but when you kind of bring them in to be kind of like oh you have to care for these characters yeah. and then they're just getting killed off in every five seconds like bloody cannon fodder it was just no that's just bad storytelling mm. it must it'd be better to bring those characters in early to, but someone keeps going oh that's just how Moffat plays he likes to play around with time it's like well, I wish you would play around with better storytelling. Uh, yeah, but I just didn't like season six for the stop anyway. Season six, apart from, season six, which one was that? But you, uh, season, season six is that one. That's that's the yeah, that's that, yeah, that particular. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because it starts off with the um, the, the two part American uh, episode, the uh, pandering to I, the Americans. I don't, I didn't have, I don't a have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with the pandering to the Americans to a certain degree. Uh, to a certain degree, the problem is, of course, the impossible um, astronaut. It was just it was just one of those things where it's just like Have you tried sitting down and working out that timeline? It makes no sense. No, it's worse than that. It's the fact that I'm there going the the, the mysterious thing is like, okay, the doctor dies and the whole thing is like, Oh, it's a doctor from two thousand two hundred odd years in the future, something like that. And then it's like, Oh, the doctor turns up and he doesn't know he's gonna die. The big mystery is how he's not gonna die. And it's almost by the time the, the 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 clone flesh thing no not the clone flesh is the um as soon as the guys with the um the miniaturization the miniaturization guys coming you going yep, yep that's yep, the doctor I know yep I it's know like you, can, you just you just go oh god that was, it's one of the things you call it, you figure it out halfway down so like, it's almost like thinking like they're giving you just like aha we know you know yeah the doctor's gonna survive this <laughs> so of course we know the doctor's gonna survive at the eye the the joy is figuring out how he's gonna survive exactly. it exactly yep not you know you, <laughs> you know what the end's gonna be but you'd like to go along for the journey yeah not not and you not, want a good journey not showing you the journey half you know five episodes yeah. before it bloody comes it's like you know, yeah again it's that thing of you gotta, you gotta bring in, the, you gotta bring in the guys in the episode to show you how, how it's done. It's like no, you don't have to do that. I just that, that whole thing. But then that the mystery towards, was ruined. But but what it did do is that when I started watching season seven of of Matt Smith, hmm. when they had, I started watching it and I'm watching like oh, you know, whole, Asylum of Daleks. I'm going, all right, well, what character are they going to bring forth from that one? And the one thing that I got up to is it came to the a town called uh, what is it? A town called, oh, I hated that episode. That was so. Okay. 
but I like the cyborg and I'm like yeah. damn I want to see that cyborg yes. come back when's he going to come back oh will he come back in this episode will he come yeah. back in this episode and then he never comes back and I'm like damn it that's the character, awesome character that that's I want the to see char- come back that's the character you want to see come back and a good man goes to war yes Oh, well, no, uh, I'm just no, saying, that, that would have been the previous one. I know, so but I'm saying that. That's yeah. the character you want to see come back. Well, even that kind that, of situation. That's the guy who... We don't want to see the guys in that bloody um, pirate episode ever again, because that was a shit episode. I actually didn't mind it. I'm okay with it, and I've learned to... It, it, it was one of the better episodes oh, of that season. Plot hole at go-go. Anyway, so you, even if, you could have found somewhere to put him, because the whole concept of season seven is, is the great intelligence. Hmm. What the heck if you'd had that cyborg dude going up against the whole stack of the Whisper Men? That would have been awesome. You could have just lined up Whisper Men and he's just going nuts or and maybe, because... Or maybe you saw his corpse when they're in the battle at the final battle. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Just as a nice little hint. Yeah, exactly. He oh, was but... there fighting with the Doctor at the end. Exactly. You, you could have just had him, yeah, as I said, called forth. And it, you, you just basically let him and Strax just sit there for ages just knocking in them out. And you know that they can't be defeated and you know it's pointless and whatever else. But it just would have been funny to have just watched the two of them just going nuts at them. And then just had a dinosaur there for the fun of it. Yeah. Just a oh, T-Rex that, eating the reptile. That was probably one of the best Matt Smith episodes. Even though it wasn't, you know, again, the, the, the storytelling wasn't up to par, but it was just so damn fun. It was just a fun episode. Oh, definitely. There's a, there's, yeah, there's a couple of bits where you sort of go, uh, but if you just ignore it, it's yeah. just fun. And that's the thing I was. You went from Asylum of the Daleks to Dinosaurs and Space oh. And the two good episodes. No, the fun, uh, here's the problem with Asylum of the Daleks. I really loved that episode. And I rewatched it. I went, okay, that doesn't make sense. No, that's all right. It's fine. It's fine. I'll, re- I'll, I'll watch it again because I really enjoyed it. Okay, that's a really big plot hole. Okay. Yeah. I'll watch it again. Oh, God, this is actually a, ter- it's a terrible episode wrapped up in really good awesomeness. <laughs> so the more you watch it, the more you see the flaws. And the problem yeah, is that one of the biggest, biggest, biggest plot holes in the entire episode is that the Daleks abduct the Doctor to go down to the planet to you know, make sure that it's secure because they don't want the, you know, the Daleks, you know, you know, getting you know, getting out. It's the, it's the planet with all these insane, insane darts in there. The doctor Fair. goes to the um, you know, why don't you just kill them? And then the idea is that we don't want to destroy, you know, malevol- man, you know, malevolence of that. It's yes, you know, it's, it's the, the dark concept of beauty. You know, you can't destroy something that beautiful. That just and that's all well and good, but the problem is they had enough power to destroy. The, and, and okay, okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm skipping ahead. So the whole thing is, like, you know, the Doctor's got to go down, stop whatever's, you know, mm. you know the problem with the, the, for the Daleks. And then they blow up the planet anyway. I thought it was that he had to go down there to drop the shield so they could blow up the planet. No, they, no, that was... He went down there, they had to drop the shields anyway, but they did... That's the thing, he said to him, why don't you just blow up the planet? And, he, and they said, we don't want to destroy the planet. But then destroy the planet anyway. I thought they couldn't destroy the planet. No, they didn't want to. They said didn't want to destroy such creatures of pure, you know, evil. They said it outright, we don't want to destroy the planet. And then they destroy the planet. It's like, if you wanted to kill the Doctor and the guys, why don't you just wait till he was on the surface and just, or better still, just blow up the planet, which you said you could do anyway, and kill the Doctor in front of you. Clearly you were smart enough to take him out before. It's like, oh, God. That's what I mean. It's a great episode. The more you watch it, the more you go, oh, my God, this makes no sense. Oh, well, if nothing else, it was an excuse for the Doctor to spend more time with his mother-in-law. The, uh, <laughs> and the, the bonus he had, they'd broken up at that stage, so... The only excuse the entire episode had was to erase the Doctor from the Daleks' database. So whenever the Dalek Doctor came up against the Daleks at any other point, they wouldn't recognise him because that makes sense. See, but you could have done that at any stage. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just like, oh, because I did like, that's the thing. I like the idea that um, after um, a good man goes to war, the Doctor's trying to keep a low key, trying mm. to, and erasing himself from history. I liked all that. The problem is, the Doctor erased himself from all this history, and yet. All of a sudden, people start to know about him again. <laughs> all this other yeah, stuff. you go straight from Asylum of the Daleks, oh. which is about him erasing himself from the yeah. Daleks. Next episode, Dinosaur on a Spaceship, and how does that start? Uh, With him getting a phone call. Yeah. To go and help someone out. Like, yeah. Oh, God. 
damn it. It's just that, oh. It's just all that type of stuff. It's like, oh my god. I, I, I really wish Russell T. Davis was back. <laughs> you know? Maybe not writing, but at least kind of, you know, not necessarily executive producer. Or maybe just kind of just, you know, saying, no, this is dumb. Keep it like, you know, don't do it like this. Yeah, but I think what it might have been is you've got to look at 5, 6, and 7. They are their own thing. Yeah. You look at that. Basically, every storyline for 5, 6, and 7 has been round back into itself. Yes, yes. And it's even this first season, it's now all wound back into itself. Mm, so More or less, except for the um, this Christmas special. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You look at everything, it's all wound itself back down. Yeah. Look at the when Matt Smith first turned well, up, actually, he had no. those companions, they're all wound up together. They're, but that's the other thing, you also had the crack in, in time, and that was kind of never fully revealed on how that the TARDIS blew up originally, and... Oh yeah, but that was that conversation that the two of them had, which also explained the whole of season six, the whole of season five. Who was it that originally blew, who who blew up the TARDIS again? I don't think that was ever told. Yes, it was. Do you know in that small piece where, in the time of the Doctor, the two of them are sitting down together and having that little conversation, uh, and he he goes on I, about the, the silence, and she goes, "No, that was a renegade faction that went back through time and decided oh, yeah, to the wipe silence. you out, oh, God, and they the also silence. went down there and decided to blow up your TARDIS." But uh, guess what? That's, that's right. I'm not going to give you any graphics. I'm not going to give you anything. I'm just going to tell you that was so poor. That's right. That's why I've forgotten all about it because that was so. The funniest bit oh. I is that we recorded that on the TV. Yeah. And when they showed it the first time, because I think they showed that live, we got it. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, there's an actual distortion at that no. point. And I thought, of all the points you can distort in the original filming of it, mm. is that point there, and I just made me laugh. It was so poorly done, that whole... And again, it's another woman it, that's that gone and made out with. That would have kind of been... That's an action... Uh, obviously, you know, Missy, Missy, the, Missy the rogue time lord... Um, obviously, wasn't a, wasn't thought about just then because that that would have been an explanation that would have actually made more sense if it was the master. Yes. So, and if the master, and there's the thing. Well, hey, you, you doing that? Look at the again. I say it again. Last of the time lords. Mm-hmm. He created his paradox machine. Yeah. What the cause. Yeah. A yeah. crack in the sky. <sighs> yeah. It says enough when the fans are writing better Doctor Who episodes than the writers. No, I'm just doing baldies, which yeah. is basically what I used to have in the old Superman comics, was you would go through, and if you found a fault, if you were able to explain it and justify it, you get a baldy award. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah so that's, uh, the Marvel used to have the no prizes. Yeah. But I, I go with the theory that, yes, I complain about things in a certain degree, but I like to think I can also come up with justifications and there's certain things that are good and certain things that are bad. I don't want to I, just become a fan who sits there and complains. I, no, um, my complaints... Again, my complaints is more about, a, a, more about storytelling. It's not about nitpicking. No. But, yeah, because the, the mess shouldn't be able to do this because you know, he, in this episode he got his hand chopped off and all that type of stuff. The, nit, the really nitpicking stuff I don't mind. But it's the fact that I'm... I want a good storytelling. I want a good story. I want it to be self-contained. Not necessarily, you know, about continuity or anything. Mm. I mean, I mean, the pacing on this finale was horrendous. It was just really that point where you're going. You had this first part that was so padded out, and the second part that just felt rushed. Yeah. It was just poorly laid definitely out. Definitely the weakest of the finales so far. Of all the finales in the new season, it's definitely the weakest. Mm. And it's almost that thing where. I think the entire season is. If it the season the entire season has kind of been a little bit lackluster, yeah. And if the finale had been spectacular, it could have gone. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so it could have been season three. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. You think about it. No, when um, we look back at see, series three hmm. with with David the Martha Tennant, the Martha Jones year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, I think it's Martha Jones yeah, like no. the character. Um, but you get to it and again it has the same problem that it's just not good enough to keep it going yeah. but then you get to Utopia yeah. and the last two and you're just like damn yes that, that, that three parter and that's the thing that could have been a three parter just masqueraded as a, a three parter masqueraded as a, a one parter and two episodes you know so you know mm-hmm. this, you know the last you know the last two episodes are going to be the finale yeah exactly so yeah. you know the whole, that was a bit of a lo- lovely little yeah. ut- uh, turn in uh, Utopia and that was a good episode as well oh definitely you know the whole thing of 
and it played into the, the that that is a truly a three part episode, yeah. and it played well the entire way through. You could have done that here, and that's the thing. Um, season three, I'm trying, I was going to say, Smith and Jones was a great start. Yep. Um, the only things that the ones that come to mind, notice notably that come to mind are um, the Shakespeare one. That was a, that yeah, was a okay. Episode. So you went with um, Gridlock, then you go Gridlock Shakespeare was, Shakespeare's. Oh, sorry. I heard um, that um, Gridlock was Smith was and that, Jones Shakespeare Code Gridlock. Gridlock was actually you know has been. I just read an article just recently. It was uh, they did a poll of every episode and tried to get people to vote on them. Yep. And or rate them, I should say. They took they went through the lowest rated ones and see which ones were actually good episodes of the lower rated ones. And Gridlock yep. was on there. I quite didn't like Gridlock. I do. I think it's. Do you know what it, it is? If you've read two thousand AD, yeah, or any yeah. of those ones, you get a distinctive feel. You yeah. even have a look at the couple of the characters. Yes, they two thousand AD. Um, the one wearing the bowler suit. Um, yes. Was it? Oh, yep. God, yeah. Yeah. Johnny He's, Normal or something like that. Yeah. 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 And, and. He is a, uh, a, a, a essentially, yeah. if not the character, is is a homage to the character from two thousand AD, and I I really liked that episode. Yeah, and I was like, what really? Gridlock was a lower rated one. No, we um, went from Gridlock, and then we go to the Lazarus experiment. Oh, the Lazarus Wait, experiment. Let's that one. Apparently, uh, that's better on hindsight. No, um, it's not. I can tell um, you because I've watched it again recently. Yeah, and again, I, I could not. No, I could you, not you know what I find one. the big and I know it's going to sound stupid. The creature that they create. Yeah, the creature sucked. I, but I think the story was lame as well. Do you know what it reminded me of? Go on. Go and watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> and go and watch the mechanical robots in that. Or, <laughs> or even the first one that it becomes. Go and watch it. And it does. It looks like that. And I'm thinking, that's 1990s. And for mm. that time, it was pretty good. Yeah. And then I'm the special here, effects and I'm one like, did look like the... Um, do you know that? That's what it reminded me of. The special effects of that monster reminded me of the ooze guy from the movie. Exactly. Yes. yes. When he actually oozes. Yes. 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 It's the dodgy CGI where they kind of just painted the face on but not actually give it any real depth. It's like, yes. oh my God, it's so bad. Um, and then after that, I know we had, uh, there was one which was called 42. 42 was a really good episode. It was the very first uh, Doctor Who episode shot in real time. Yeah, uh, so, yes and no. No, I mean like as in... Um, yeah, they, it wasn't shot in real time. It wasn't shot live. I mean, but it was yeah, edited yeah. to be in real time. So it was a forty-two well, minute episode running in forty-two minutes. Long. Yeah, yeah. What they said is they've had to adjust things slightly. But yeah, you get the premise. Yeah, um, yeah. That that wasn't too bad. And then I think we jumped on to the two part. Um, there was oh, there was this uh, nineteen twelve. Oh, some times. No, sometimes. No, no, it was the, that, Dalek, the Daleks in... Uh, oh, yeah, I'll try and block that one that, out. That was terrible. No, that, that was the that worst was Dalek before, episode. That, that, that was, was before. That was number four. That was before... Um, that, uh, okay. that was Martha. Yeah, Martha. No, no, no. But when, Sorry, when you yeah. said... Oh, you mean sequence. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it went... Uh, let me do this again. Gridlock Smith and Jones. Then it went... Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Then Gridlock. Went Gridlock. And then it was the Daleks in Manhattan, Dark Manhattan, which I oh, try and block out of that my was, mind. That is that horrible. was the worst. That was, in my opinion, the worst Daleks episode until Victory of the Daleks. No, I think it's worse than Victory of the Daleks. I think that Victory of the Daleks was fucking dumb. I hate Victory of the Daleks. It's one of my least favorite episodes. The thing was, do you know the big dramatic, pop, the big thing that I hate about that episode? I think it probably because I'm British. Mm. you might guess <laughs> at least until I got assimilated um, when he holds up the jammy dodger and I'm there going he's holding up a jammy dodger and saying it's a bomb is this actually a damn jammy dodger or is it actually a exploding damn jammy dodger it's it's one of those things of oh it's he's trying to he's trying to bluff the Daleks but I'm there going why not a prop? That, you know, for example, one of my favourite props that you rarely ever see and kind of doesn't do anything is the one from, um, uh, the, the when Donna comes back and, uh, the, the 10th Doctor's just running around this thing with a, with like a, a little satellite dish Oh, on um, uh, 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 Partners in Crime. Partners in Crime. Yes, yes, it's, the, the, the it's, tripod. It's, sort does of it thing really I... do much? And same with the one that the box that goes ping in the 50th anniversary. It's just a stupid that little gadget. Which you, I which... want that because it keeps downloading comics from the future. Exactly. Um, but it's just one of those naff little gadgets that the Doctor occasionally has. Uh, another example. Although well, I suppose be... it seems to be only like a 11th, a 10th drop. Yeah, Blink. Yeah. Um, he has the one which he uses to detect 
yeah. the guy gets thrown backwards in time and supposedly it does things and it makes chickens yeah. um, lay eggs. Yeah. And it's just a naff little naff little device he's just cooked up on the spot. And the thing is, it didn't have to work. But mm. it went a little bit better than a jammy dodger. Because then I'm just there going, he's holding a jammy dodger. I don't know if you were probably even going, he's holding a biscuit. He's clearly holding a biscuit. Or a jammy dodger. I knew it was a jammy dodger. Mm. I love jammy dodgers. But, you see, um, but it's just something that was going, the entire episode, just nothing happens again. Same with deep breath. The, nothing really happens in the episode. All it does is basically go, it was just Moffat's going, we're just going to get rid of the no, old. You can't, you can't say that. We get new Daleks. I was going to say, all we get is Moffat killing off the old Daleks to bring back, to bring the eye Dalek. Which no one likes. Which, of course. Ever since was it episode no, ever since was it season six, we've never really seen ever again because Asylum of the Daleks was full of old Daleks. Okay, one <laughs> appears in the end of season six. Yes, when he's playing chess with a guy and the uh, the leftover piece is the stork. Yes. Uh, then we get another one appearing in Asylum of the Daleks, but it's not even a head one. If no. you look at it, the Prime no. Minister Dalek outranks yeah, him. I know. So I'm supreme, but there's someone who's more yeah. supreme than me. They, they've made more appearances in the video games than they have in the TV series. I was okay <laughs> with the coloured Daleks. I was, I was okay. I, no. I, I, was, I wanted to know what the hell. Like, for d- example, the Eternal Dalek. What's him? Is he a Dalek who survived throughout time? And his yeah. simple concept is to amass all the data. Like That yeah. would have been a cool one. And you could have come across it and go... I know every adventure and everything that you've gone and you've done. I am the one that must survive because yeah. I am eternal. But the whole thing of like you know the cult of the you, know, you think the cult of Scarrow, <sighs> all that type. Oh no, it's the, the, the victory of the darks is just the only cool thing about the episode of victory of the darks is Winston got, Churchill. No, nah, no, nah, Ironsides. I love the Ironsides. I'm gonna go Winston Churchill, but that just a you, oh, you've met Winston Churchill. But I didn't. So, I, but I've met an Ironside, and he looked awesome. And I love the iron. I love the idea of the Ironsides. You know, the fact that you know, oh yeah, you're I a Dalek. Good. You're a da- oh god, that was so. It was just so forced as well. You could have done a big thing, and like the Darks just go, ha ha ha. It's we we're going to retreat into our spaceships and fly away because we have defeated you, Doctor. Huh? The first time we have defeated you. How? How did you defeat the Doctor? You did nothing. Oh no! I'm, oh, like the problem I think is the worst. The bad episodes of Rusty Davis look great compared to some of the bad episodes of the Moffat era. Sadly, oh. I must actually agree with you. Right. <laughs> uh, you sit down there and you go through all these episodes, and you do. You sit there and you just go, oh. I mean, I might have to re-watch. Even Matt might, Smith admits that his favourite season is season five. I might have to rewatch Fear Her again just to see no. if it's improved. Oh, man, don't do that to yourself, <laughs> mate. Come on. But, but now, I want now, my monster to be a squiggly ball monster. Now, you saying that, you, <laughs> here's something you should go and watch Fear Her. Yeah. And you know when they try and do synchronise the voices of the girl and oh, the Oh, yes, that's so horrible. Now, go and watch it again with Forest of the Night. Oh, okay. And they do the exact same thing. But Forest of the Night comes off as of sounding actually quite good. Yes. It wasn't it's too... like they've actually gone, here's not how to do it. Let's try something well, different. John, and it John the thing is, I think, because they just got her to speak and then they just manipulated her voice or they yeah. added stuff onto it as opposed to getting the little girl to speak like this and she sounds really terrible. It's like, just have the girl speak normally and then we need to play the voice, it gets creepier rather than get the girl to do a really stupid voice. Because she sounds more like bloody Django Fett from Rat Attack of the Clones. Faza! Faza! Oh, God. Now, that, that, that Star Wars is a completely different discussion. <laughs> no, no, I haven't had a Star Wars podcast yet. <laughs> I'm probably not the right man for it, really. No, no. I might have to talk with someone in the 501st. <laughs> I do know a few of them now. I might not be able to get away because as soon as I go, man, that not that George Lucas a hack? <laughs> I just get force choked to death. Mm. <laughs> Hang on, I know stormtroopers. They might shoot at me, but I'll miss. <laughs> Unless you happen to be wearing a red shirt. Oh, then I'll still die. <laughs> <laughs> I'll die of my own means. Oh, that's an old internet meme now. <laughs> oh, now we're getting bad. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, I think we might have to wrap it up. Yes, I think that's a good call. I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we're that's done. Thank enough. you very much for that, mate. I, I really think, appreciate it. Thank you. I, mean, I think we both got some of our thoughts out on that horrendous. Um, I think you. Okay, I think you might be a little bit more lenient than it to me because you've got um, the kids who. Uh, probably found a bit more enjoyable than this uh, cantankerous old fart. Yeah, well, you see, the way I look at it is, is that, okay, I don't know everything about the Doctor, but yeah. I probably know a fair bit. Um, and then I have my family. Now, my yeah. wife has definitely come into it, yeah. and she just embraces the Doctor. Um, we have Doctor Who bread shoes. She recently <laughs> went and ordered a... Did she have a choice with you as her husband? Hey, man, I'm, I'm just... Understand. Okay, so we've got bed sheets with Doctor Who. She recently went got um, shower curtains that are Doctor Who. She tried to order us Tarnas bathrobes as well. Oh, wow. Are you getting one thinking, can't you? Um, yeah, yeah, she tried doing somewhere else but didn't have much success. Oh, bugger. Um, Maybe try pop And so, culture. yeah, she just goes through and she will go through and get anything she can that's Doctor Who. She embraces it fully. And then the kids, the kids have got into it. And, heck, if you come around the place and just the first thing Jasmine says to you, watch the ah, watch the ah. <laughs> That's all she wants to do is sit there and watch Doctor Who. We never catch up. The only time we ever catch up know. is when they're... Cons. Ex- is cons, yes. And that's normally the two of us are in costumes. Yeah. And, you know, you're you, busy doing something and I'm busy doing something and we never... I, I think it's the first time for about three or four years we've actually had to sat down and had a conversation. Yes. <laughs> We've got to do it more often. <laughs> Maybe not with a recorder. I, I don't... I, look... <laughs> If people like this, I'm quite happy to do this. We should like do... It. Well, so, like with um, like with Eric, I've done, like, three video ga- games-related ones, so I don't mind doing more of the same episodes. It's just, it's just that we had... I think it was... Yeah, last, the last time it was like, yeah, you know... Because I hadn't seen the episode yet. You mm. had, because you, you stayed up, you poor bastard. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't like, get up wait, wait early in the morning to see that episode. Uh, the, be- the best review I had of it was that it was... Th- the saddest bit was that it was the night or the morning of my daughter's birthday party. Yeah. Okay, so we had the family over, yeah. as in, okay, so there's the four of us, and then I had my sister over, and then we had <laughs> a friend of ours over. And it was sort of the first one that they'd had seen of Doctor Who for a very long time, oh, and my sister swings around to me and goes this is the reason I don't watch Doctor Who. You wouldn't believe how much I was just thrown down. So all of us went back to bed and woke up. And the first thing I did was I walked out in the morning and just went, I had the most horrible dream last night. I'd gone through and I'd watched Doctor Who and it was terrible. Thank God it was only a dream and I can now sit down and watch it properly because I recorded. (laughs) That was, oh. I tell you what. I'm really glad I didn't watch that before I went to the the party because uh, yeah, it would if, have just been a complaint. If I would I would have been absolutely ropeable. Yeah, it's it, just... I I watched that when I got back and I was just furious for almost the rest of that night. I was just like, eat this fucking shit. fuck. But there's so many problems with it, and it's not it's not big things. It's small things. It's like when they first introduced Kate again. Yeah, she gives this big spiel. She didn't need to. Yeah. All she needed to simply come in was say that she was Kate Stewart, head of unit, done. Yeah. I didn't personally. I didn't feel there was a need to. She'd already done her big spiel that stole the limelight yeah. in the day of the Doctor, when she sits there and she goes, "I'm this, I'm that." Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm Brigadier Lester Stewart's I, it was a daughter, nice... and you just see them for a moment go, "Oh crap!" Yeah, and. You did get that nice moment of badass where uh, she just throws the uh, exactly. Simon helmet. That's kind of all you really needed. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, you could have just simply picked it up with her going, oh, Kate Stewart, head of unit, and then swinging around to doing the exact same line they say of, you know, you don't know how to defend us and whatever else. Boom. Here, just because I got you here, and I thought, this is a good way to end this. How do you think Moffat's going to deal with next year being the dark invasion of Earth in 2015? Because there's only two ways he can do it. He can either, you know, have Capaldi Doctor working and maybe working in the background or doing something, or completely ignore it and probably get the fans pissed off either. He'll probably piss off the fans either way. I'd be surprised if he does anything about it. I think it would be really cool if you could do an episode. And do you know what you'd do? You'd even go one step further and you'd make the episode in black and white. Mm. And just, as you said, have him doing that. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really, really good. But then. A lot of people are also calling out for him to do something in reference to the fires of Pompeii. Yeah. The reason I say 
Dark Invasion of 2015 is because it is one of the most, let's just say one of the most important episodes in Doctor Who lore. It's the, it is probably one of the only episodes in the title itself where it has a number in it clearly indicating the time period and I know, you know, they weren't thinking that Doctor Who was going to last 50 odd years ago but now which makes you go, ah oh, shit it's also the episode concerning, it was the departure of Susan, the granddaughter mm. it's it's really, no, it's one of the it's well regarded as one of the great episodes oh definitely, you and think about it, the iconic scene of it coming out of the water, the dialect coming out of the water yeah, that is, the, in many ways people well, that is a lot of people's first experience of a of a Dalek was at that stage, that moment. The Dalek invasion the of Earth. Daleks, Daleks, the Daleks, Daleks um, and they've recreated this time and time again. The Daleks travelling down London Bridge. Bridge. Exactly, yes. Um, and so I really hope there's something to that, you know, even if it's that thing of like, we've got to get away. Yes. You know, why? Really? I can't be here. Or maybe there's something that goes on in, uh, on Earth and he can't be there because mm. he can't travel into his timeline. Yeah. You know? Even though technically he's not going to that because of the Doctor. But, but it's just that thing on there going, I really hope they... Pl- it'd be nice to see them play on it. Yeah. You know? Not necessarily... They can't do anything to change the timeline. Mm. Especially because, well, let's face it, um, Carol Ann Ford doesn't look the same as she did 50 years ago. That's not fault of her own. No, no, no. That's just, you know, the, the, the bitter mistress we all have called time. But, you know, it's that thing where it's like, I really hope they try and do something with that. Because that's the one thing that's... <sighs> the consequences of Doctor Who... There's no consequences anymore in the grand scale of things, at least in on Earth. And that's probably also one of the episodes where there is a huge consequence. Yeah. You know? The, yeah. the fact that the Earth, or at least London, is practically in ruins. Yeah. And do you ever hear... Have you ever heard the um, Eighth Doctor audio dramas? Oh, not precisely, no. They actually got Carolyn Ford to come back into it. And they do a couple of stories where the Doctor returns to... The Eighth Doctor ends up in... I think it's like about... Turns out about 20 years after... So it'd be like 2035. Yeah. Yeah. And ends up turning up yeah, after the aftermath. And Susan's grown up and she's had a kid things like that and it's her reconnecting with the doctor and she's justifiably quite pissed at him you know for abandoning her mm. and all this other stuff and it really um it really uh the, the audios are really good now you saying that if you go and listen or, or when go to back to death in heaven when Clara is talking about being the doctor mm. she mentions and she says about her family her family is missing yeah she doesn't state them as being dead yeah and not and to me I got the feeling that it wasn't and maybe I'm wrong no, no, I got the no. feeling it wasn't missing as in saying they're on Gallifrey no. I got the feeling that it was missing as in they're missing 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 yeah. well that's it's also the uh, end of time it's hinted at and it's almost confirmed in the audio commentaries by uh, Ross C. Davis that oh, the, the one mother- of the one of the um, the shamed time lords one of the two shamed time lords with Rassilon is the doctor's mother that's the, the woman who goes and the woman the, the woman that visits goes visits um, yeah and then the implication is that the other one supposedly is Romana yeah but it's uh, yeah so it's about something like going you know, even though they never say anything, it's, the idea is that it had an... And I think that's good that they didn't say anything. They just left it to the imagination. Although I would have loved... It. It's one of those things where it's like... I would have loved if they had got like Caroline Ford or someone like that to play that role and, you know, just have it as a reveal. You know, that's... Yeah. That, it wouldn't have probably worked what with... Um, what with, you know, coming in earlier to talk to the other one, to, to yeah. Bernard Cribbins and all that type of stuff. So it's like uh, Wilf and all that. But it's, but it's all right. It would have worked it, okay yeah. because you remember, he never really expressly looks at. No, I mean, for as an audience thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah. we just saw, would, ah, if we just saw Cameron Ford, we probably would have recognised uh, at the fans. Would it's the same thing if you ever go and listen to the audio commentary of School Reunion hmm. when they first start filming it. Originally, the idea was that you would never see Sarah Jane's face yeah. until they got to the point where it conf- confronts the, the doctor. doctor, and then the surprise is. A, it's the Doctor, and B, it's Sarah Jane. Yeah. 
and he says originally that would have been my idea. It's the same with um, oh, what's the one with the werewolf? Um, um, uh, teeth and claws. Teeth and yes, claws. Yes, thank you. Yeah. The end of that again was to you were never meant to see that it was that the building was called Torchwood. Yeah. It was only until the very very end that you were ever meant to see yeah. that. Otherwise, it was yeah, it was the yeah. same thing. It was not meant to be the reveal. Was meant to be the end bit. Yeah. Which make it dramatically makes sense, and I think that's the problem with the modern day Doctor Who is that they've forgotten about things called dramatic timing, and they certainly don't have. Oh, they certainly want to do things like we want to do foreshadowing, so we're going to foreshadow the hell out of it. Or better still, we got to keep reminding people of the foreshadowing. Yeah, I was so. I, I, I'm not sure if you can remember, but I think it was it during the sixth season. How often I, I was just constantly every, every, after every episode of Doctor Who I was just pissing a moment like going wow do we really need to see that damn fecking shot of the um Let's the screen pregnant not pregnant pregnant pregnant, not pregnant, pregnant, not pregnant. pregnant. oh because we don't know that's happening yeah and and then the, and then you've got the uh, the clone saga happening actually I didn't mind that episode at least the second part of that episode where you got the clone doctor I thought that was actually really kind of well done. Yes, that that was that was handed well, and the idea of what they did, yeah. they switch boots and stuff, yeah. just check and see how he she, she's about it. it and it, I thought it was a good one because it's when Rory steps up as well. Yeah, that's it's that's the, the other first thing. time he steps up. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, at least he, the first time he steps up since um, the boy who waited. Yeah, 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 exactly. Whenever okay, whenever Rory's a century, you know Rory's going to be kicking ass. Yes, and and that's probably the one thing I did like about a good man goes to war. Yeah, is it allows him to go forth and kick ass. Yeah, it allows him to just step up. And I even like that moment. That was the best moment of the entire episode. Is yeah. Rory? And that's what I like is is in that series there was there was every so often there was a reference from the Doctor to Rory going you know you live for two thousand years are you okay Yeah, do you still have your memories? And it's two old guys. Yeah, who are young. But understanding to, where it to, comes from, and and that's one thing is very funny. Um, except maybe now because of had the time displacement with all the things like you know we don't know exactly how old the Doctor is now after um time of the Doctor because of how long he's spent on um yeah. on that uh, whatever. This is one of my only complaints about Ross T Davis era is that the Doctor was never allowed to age, or at least yes numerically yes. age. Yes, as that fact of like it seemed mm. that Christopher Eccleston was around for a year. David Tennant was around for four years, and at least at least that's one thing I liked about Matt Smith is that they allowed him to, even though he aged, you know, mm. later on, he was still the same youthful look, visage for three hundred odd years. Well, the interesting thing is now, do you go along with the concept of Christopher Eccleston that there was another companion apart from Rose? From Rose, um, canonically, no, because it's been almost flat out stated that he regenerates you know he regenerates into the, the Ninth Doctor at the beginning of Rose so it you know he's pretty much flew out of the TARDIS somehow stumbled upon the Auton plot and that's why the first time he sees himself in the mirror is just going oh no his teeth Ooh, uh. yeah that's the idea and the War Doctor kind of proves that to a degree uh, now what I was going to get at was um, okay here's the reason why do you believe that there was a period of time between when he leaves and when he comes back? You know oh, you mean, uh, hang on. In in which first part? episode, Rose, first when episode. he goes to the leaves and it's, he says, oh, I can take you anywhere in space. And yeah. she says no. Yeah. So he departs. Then he comes back and he says, did I mention it comes in time as well? Do you believe there's a period of time of that in adventures? Personally, I say no. Only because it just seems a bit... It, it's, it, it, to me, it feels funnier that it's just that thing where it's like... He quite literally closes the door, sets it for like a minute in the future, and then goes, do I mention it, it travels through time? It, that's, a, that's a doctor play. That's the, that's the same mm-hmm. as, you know, the beginning of Smith & Jones, where he just takes the, it takes the tie off and goes like this, runs away, and it's like, what the fuck? Comes back, and then at like, the end of things, if he goes into the tires, comes back out, and he's got the tie in his hand. That's a... It's a play. Yeah. You know? That feels very Doctorish. Um, inserting time in there gets a bit tricky. But here's the other thing. There's also a problem with the planned words, because they do the thing of, like, the Doctor's 900 years old. 
but Eccleston says that he's been travelling in the TARDIS for 900 years. Yes, that which is actually, generalised. Yep. Which actually plays better than him saying he's 900 years old, which yep. they do later on, which annoyed me. Because there's... There is a... If, if you go... Especially, okay, let's say for the Matt Smith ageing thing. Mm. It took him a long time to age when he was on the planet. Time Lords are known to have an extended, a really long life cycle, regardless of regeneration. So even in the regeneration, they can have hundreds, you know, hundreds of years mm-hmm. before they start to generate. Maybe they degenerate as, like, say, maybe they're, they're very youthful. Like, like in say a normal human lifespan, you're yep. you're youthful for about fifty. You, you know, you're youthful for about say thirty years, and, and you don't really change. Then after thirty years, you start getting decaying, then rapidly decaying. So that might be the things like say a few hundred years with a doctor. With a doctor, he's perfectly fine. That's why you know you see like between say Patrick Troughton, I think he said he was about three hundred. Yep. Uh, Tom Baker said he was about four. Uh, no, if, if I'm right, now could be wrong. It goes. Patrick Troughton mentions in time. I think it's time, time, Tomb of the Time Man. He mentions like three hundred. What was yeah, two hundred. Time Time Warrior. Uh, that sorry, the Time Warrior. Uh, John Pertwee mentions that he's over two hundred years. Yeah. So okay, you can. Yeah. Whatever. And of course, his time would probably go a lot. He yeah, probably have a short lifespan because he's stuck on. For some reason, I want to say that Tom Baker either mentions he's four fifty. I think it's four fifty because I think it's um because I think he's stones of blood. Yeah, I can't remember, but it's um. I think it's because I think he's mentioned to be about six hundred in either Colin Baker's era or yeah. Sylvester Sil- Sil- McCoy is seven fifty three. Yeah, and he has the nine hundred year old diary in the movie. Yeah, it's seven fifty three in Sylvester McCoy because it's time in the Rani. Yeah, um, when she when she captures him, and I think it says seven hundred and fifty three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he has a 900-year-old diary at the beginning of the uh, Doctor Who, the movie, yeah. The Enemy Within, if you want to go with that. And it's implied that the the Eighth Doctor... If you go by, like, the other canon, the Doctor... The Eighth Doctor is around for about... Well, he's had so many... He's had, like, a hundred-odd years' worth of amnesia at some point. Or he's had yes. stuck on... Yes, So he's he about yeah. 300... He has about an extra... Three to four hundred years on top of the extra whatever was at Silas McCoy. So if you add the whole thing of like say the first Doctor, let's just say that first Doctor, maybe his time adventuring was maybe say ten years at most, hmm. given time gaps and the companions. So when he gets to Patrick Trash and he is about two hundred and fifty, so that adds about an extra two hundred dollar two hundred years bef- it, onto his lifespan before he starts traveling the TARDIS. Hmm. So it would make him about, yeah, you could get to 900 years old, adding to about 110, uh, sorry, about 1100 years old by the time he gets to Chris Robertson. It does allow a bit of extra time for the 8th Doctor. Then all of a sudden they're saying 900 years, 900 years, 900 years, 900 years. Oh no, sorry, it's 900 years, then 10, it's like 901, and he dies in when he's 900, 904. That's like, and then, because you get that on the... When they got the police report, no, because I think he's is it on the on the le- on the uh, the the tree has the thing of the um, his life, you know, and the, when he, she takes a, the sample of his breath and uses it to analyse the doctor's time stream. And, um, oh, that would, uh, that's from uh, End of the World. End of the World, yes, and I think she, I'm not sure if he has her age on that, his age on that, but the 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 cop report after the possible astronaut saga the with the you know the the miniature guys in the in the human in the human bot bot they have it you know d- day of death um twelve hundred whatever and you know he's explicitly stated as being nine hundred and five nine hundred and six uh when he turns back up yeah so it's like you know how old are you nine hundred and six so it's like oh man you actually, it's, yeah but I did like that they did have an out in Day of the Doctor where the Doctor goes, you yeah, know, 1,200 years old, if I'm not lying. Yeah, exactly, yes. That is a good line. That is yeah. a good line to yeah. kind of like get out of that. But, oh, the Doctor's age is so annoying because it's like, oh, I really wish, you kind of wish that, be, that each Doctor had about 100 years. That's, you know? that's generally the rule I've played yeah. with. Yeah. And it's yeah. fact, you go, but how long around, how long was the War Doctor around then? 
Was he around right. for one year? Was he around for a yeah, hundred years? Yeah, but then do you not count that? Because he oh. doesn't count himself as no. being, no. you know. Um, but that said, I, I like the fact that now, now hang on, you could, you, could, you could figure it out. This is how you figure it out. Uh, Twelfth Doctor mm-hmm. states that he's been around for 2,000 years. Yeah. Okay. Matt Smith, uh, even when he was at his heights, mentioned that he was around about 1,100. Take it from the sixth? Yeah, from, from about season six, yeah. Okay. Now, I think in time of the Doctor, they mentioned that the Doctor was around there for around about 300 years that he stayed at. Yeah. Okay, so 12 plus uh, 30, that's 1,500. So you could possibly say that the War Doctor had been around for 500 years because before then, he didn't accept himself as the War Doctor, even though he existed. So therefore, what you say is, now that the 2,000 years, part of that is him accepting the fact that he was the War Doctor. It also could be the fact of, you know, he just stops lying. or Because or, we don't know how long the time war went. That's, that's the problem with a, a time war, is that did it go for a year or did it go for a millennia? Exactly. So, you know, how old, how long was the time the War Doctor going? And that's the other thing, because you go to the end of the Eighth Doctor to, because when he regenerates, you look at the um, image in the mirror, it's a young John Hurt. Yeah, exactly. To the time of the Doctor, it's an old John Hurt. You go with the idea that he doesn't age... Yeah. He doesn't age like we do. He ages over centuries, and that's why it took three hundred years you, of time on that planet for him to become decrepit. Have you thought that there's a reason that they showed uh, Matt Smith in Time of the Doctor aging so much, hmm. so that whenever they call him back, they can just say, "Oh, we took him from his period of time of the Doctor." Probably. <laughs> well, that's, and that's the same reason they did they did it with David Tennant hmm. in. Um, it's heavily implied that is when he was um, he was running around without a companion for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, yes. It, it's that period between the end of series four yeah. and the first and the yeah. basically the, not the first special, but but uh-huh. in that yeah. period, yes. Because yeah. he even states he goes, "Oh, I've just been off and I've snogged." You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I, I do like the uh, thing. Like, I just got married again. I'm not, oh, married! I just I want to do that again. <laughs> That's such a good line. Yeah. Um, well, that's the other thing here. You look at the river. That's how you get into the whole River Song thing. It's like you, know, you go. River Song was clearly made for, to a certain degree, to made for David Tennant, and then you go thrown into Matt Smith because the idea is that you know, River Song immediately recognizes David Tennant. Yeah. And <laughs> like, well, they never met again. Here's an interesting one for you. They imply that yes with River Song is meant to have met him through his timelines and all yeah. that sort of stuff now I have a theory on this maybe River Song is Clara no <gasps> no I have a, I have a different theory <laughs> if you watch during um, uh, the Pandorica opens yeah that's when he first comes across uh, River Song she's dressed up as Cleopatra you ever notice how sorry just quickly I was going to say this before you ever notice how many of Doctor Who's uh, companions are now older than the Doctor you, got, you know before you know mm. if you've got the near 2000 two years we're always now 2000 Amy's about 2000 uh, Captain Captain Jack is now about four, or 5000 depending on how many times he's been buried in under the earth for a thousand years <laughs> So but all these, all, so all these doctors' companions. We don't know how long River Song was running around for before she got to. Um, so how many of these companions are actually old than the Doctor? Uh, not gonna even try. <laughs> Still worth it. Okay, so the first time he comes across her, yeah. she looks like Cleopatra. If you go <laughs> with the concept of backstepping, go to the girl in the fireplace. Mm-hmm. It's Mickey who states about the fact that the Doctor talks about Cleopatra. Yeah. Jump back again. The Eighth Doctor movie. He mentions the fact that Cleopatra is a good kisser. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the third Doctor who mentions about having met her. So, I think it would have been nice if they could have somehow mentioned about the fact that, you know, I've always been Cleopatra or something, and therefore it would have given well, enough didn't, nods. Didn't, didn't they say in that episode that uh, anyone could have noticed she wasn't Cleopatra? She was actually she was actually using her lipstick to um, manipulate the minds? It's like anyone could see she's not Cleopatra. You know, yeah, yeah, definitely not Cleopatra. But that's what I mean. I mean, you know, if... 
I think it would have been nice. If it's, it, a it's a nice recurring joke, and yeah, it probably could have done it. Yeah, it could have done it. I thought it, I thought it would have been nice if the first time she spins around him and he goes, "You're clear patron," and she goes, "Well, it's certainly not the first time for you," or something yeah. like that. And therefore, it would have been an odd, and you would have gone, "Oh wow!" So what it means is every time it's possibly being clear patron. Oh, it could have been that one. Let's see that one. Let's just say it all. It all comes off of that one time. The third Doctor met her. Yeah, now yeah. I, it mightn't be the third. I'm just trying to remember. Just, for some reason, yeah. I've got that in my mind. No, but I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm running with that. So, Future River Song met Doctor the past Doctor as Cleopatra back in the day. Yeah, yeah, running around in when she was being more of a probably you know the whole her old archaeologist thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And therefore, that would have been enough of a nod because people would have gone, "Oh wow, now she has th- met the third Doctor." We can a, justify that. Here's a thought. Going back onto the. Um, can of worms that is the afterlife river song she got uploaded into the um, library computer so did she get copied by the master or because if we now have this notion that a dead dead person can come back through the void in, into a new body could we bring back river song yes we could but no we won't yeah I know <laughs> I just thought about just there because no, again, just, talking about ripping off your previous story arcs, saving someone's mind into a computer. No, I don't think it's 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 even they've admitted they will not bring back River Song unless the story justifies. Do you know why? I want to see. Do you want to me? I want to see. It's the same thing that happened to Q in Star Trek: Next Generation. Yeah, he got overused, and then they decided um, to bring him back. Yes and no with Q. They used him a few times early on, then he would have a long period where he didn't come back, and he, he was stronger for it. If they had used him more often than they wanted to, he would have been diluted. No, I would. The thing is, you can always bring back uh, River Song oh, yeah. out of the blue. Yep. In the Capaldi yes. era, let's just face it, we can always do that. I don't think it would be a good idea to, especially because the idea is that. Um, so the idea is that they're almost the their personal timelines are flipped. So. You know, the last time the the, the Doctor's going to meet River Song is the first time he meets a kind of thing, and vice mm. versa. It doesn't quite work out like that timeline line wise, but that's the idea. And it, I did kind of like that moment in the Name of the Doctor where you know, you know, he goes, you know, River's there. I've always, you know, she's always there. You know, it's that, yeah. it's like it's like almost the only time that the Doctor is actually truly admitted that he actually like you know loves river yeah yeah and even when they got married it almost felt like it was a it was a it was he got married for convenience you never truly saw them together as as a couple except in like that one little off scene in something else and it's like, yeah i want to i would love to have seen more of that mm. i love would have loved to have seen an actual story of the doctor and River as a couple, and I would have loved to have seen it be multiple doctors. Yeah, even if even if it had sort of been a beginning of an episode or yeah. something like that, you know, where she's like, yeah, yeah. see ya, you know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it just wouldn't be that thing where, uh, and yeah, it, they they tried to do it, it just never seemed to work. No, and that's why I did like that bit where it's like you know, it's almost that thing where you know the doctors, and again, it's the plot combined. It's like how is. You know, Clara's seeing River there, and all of a sudden the Doctor's able to just get into it. It's like, uh, okay, we'll just pull past it and probably finish again. Even though our uh, <laughs> our attempt at stopping uh, went on for a little bit longer, but we actually went into an actually really good uh, conversation there. That's always what I'm interesting is the interesting conversations. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have to do this again. Uh, absolute pleasure, mate. Absolute maybe pleasure. maybe when the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when the Christmas special comes out and there's a big pile of shit, we'll have to go. Oh, we'll have to yeah. rage at it. Okay. Although, yeah, Nick Frost is Santa Claus. Oh, God. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm kind of cool with that. At the same time, I was there going, oh, for fuck's sake. Nah, it's conversation you, for another time. I was I was ready to stop watching Doctor Who altogether until that came on. I was just like, I've had enough of this episode. This is fuck. Anyway, let's just finish this up. Thank you very much for uh, Thank joining you. me. Yeah, and, uh, anytime, mate. Yeah, definitely have to do this again. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, Doki. See ya. See ya. Okay, thank you very much, Evan. That was uh, a delight as always. And thank you very much for, well, listening to this very much delayed podcast. Uh, I'd love to be able to promise you more episodes next year. I would like to try. 
I've got a couple of other projects in the works I'm hoping to get out and onto the interwebs as soon as I possibly can. Please uh, keep updated on the page as to when that's going to happen. Apart from that, I hope uh, you and yours have a very good Christmas and an even better New Year. So from us here at Fanboy Crossing, keep calm and nerd on. Bye. This podcast is copyright Simon Haynes 2013. The intro music is by Chris Miller. For more of Chris's work, please visit www.myspace.com slash here is Chris Miller. For more episodes, go to www.fanboycrossing.net. You can contact the podcast via Twitter on at Word with a Nerd, or leave a message on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Word with a Nerd Podcast. This podcast is released on the Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial Share Alike 3.0 Unported License. For more information, please go to creativecommons.org.au.